Broadcasting live from Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado. High atop the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. My name is Jacob Govro. I am joined by my partner, Devante Branch. Hello, hello, hello. A big thank you to Ron's Bonds for sponsoring our press box. The Ron's Bonds, I'll get you out. 970-351-6734, ronsbondsco.com. So folks, today we present the Colorado Spartans as they take on the Cedar Rapids River Kings visiting team in from out of town. This is the Spartans' first official regular season home game. So Devante, it's all for real now. Oh, it's, it's, it's go time now, it's go time now. You know, it's our first actual real opponent, right? Last, was it two weeks ago now? We played a semi-pro team. You know, props to them for trying to compete with us. But now it's it's go time. You know, we had to iron out the kinks. Now we're ready to play. Yeah, it now is the, it is go time. He's right about that. Last week's opponent, the uh, NoCo Nightmare, still trying to wake up from that bad dream, if I, <laughs> if I had to guess. Um, and that's hopefully that's what we intend to uh, put on this visiting team, River Kings, here today. Um, we're ready to play. Real quick, I want to say a quick thank you to Top-notch plumbing, heating, and air on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld's counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eden, and Kersey. On-the-go breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado's Stonehenge and rock-solid inspiration. FitRx is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. And there you go. Thank you, everybody, for helping us put this broadcast on. As we were saying, this is the Spartans' first official regular season game, Cedar Rapids here in town. And, uh, you know, Coach was saying, we're going to put it on them. He's like, new team, new opponent, same situation. Oh, yeah. We're not going to stop. He said he, that we're going to find out very quickly what we can do. And, I, you know, I believe that because what, what is a river king? What is a River King in Cedar Rapids? What is that? I believe I believe you're on the Mississippi there, so oh. <laughs> I think it's more of like an otter. So oh, okay. So all right, a Spartan and an otter. I'll I'll take my chances for what was about to happen tonight. Hey, we all know it's about to happen, <laughs> and that's exactly what we were talking about. Um, so a couple of things, quick. Um, a little bit of injury report. Ladarius Skelton, unfortunately, will be unavailable for the next few weeks. I know we're all excited to see him show his talents out there. He'll do everything, quarterback, um, running, passing, all that. Um, we're going to have Jay Witt, Jason Whitaker, also a solid quarterback, da Davenport University product. Mm -hmm. Excited to see him flash that cannon that he's got. You know, man, yeah, we're definitely going to miss Skelton and what he kind of brings to this team. Uh, but Jason Whitaker is going to be able to handle this. You know, that, that accuracy is like no other. He's yes. got a freaking cannon on him. Uh, he'll be able to pull out and run, too, if we need to. So I have I have full faith in, in J-Dub, you know. Total, complete and total faith. Um, so, like as we were saying, a couple of injuries. Uh, they do a 21-man active mm -hmm. roster. So you always have – there's a 25-man total roster. So you always have four inactive players. For, unfortunately, tonight we've got a couple of injuries, like I said, with Skelton, a couple of other guys out. So uh, looking forward to see the team get out there and uh, put one on them. Uh, so we're going to take a quick break, um, thank a few of our sponsors as well, and we will be right back with Colorado Spartans football here on their home, 93.5 Pirate Radio. Sweet, thank you.
And welcome back, everybody. This is Jacob Grover. I am joined by my partner, Devante Branch, high above the field here at Blue Arena in the Ron's Bonds press box. And we are excited to bring you this presentation of Colorado Spartans football with the visiting team opponent from Cedar Rapids, the River Kings. We've got about 20 minutes left before the start of the game. We're just kind of here chatting, excited about the gameplay. Mm -hmm. Devante. So I don't know if anybody watched the last game that we had, but if you did, you noticed that we didn't have any goalposts at all. Uh, so today, we actually have our goalposts. All right, so there's going to be some kicking. So this game may not be as high scoring. I do think that we're going to put up 70 points on the River Otters. Um, oh, sorry. River Kings. River Kings. River Kings from Cedar Rapids. Forgive me. I'm not talking any trash. Easy, I promise. son. Easy. <laughs> uh, so we are going to be able to see some kicking today. Um, maybe a drop kick. Yeah. Maybe a drop, a drop kick, kick today. A four-point drop kick. Yeah, so we'll, we'll kind of verse you guys all on that a little bit more. This is uh, Arena, National Arena League football version 2.0 with the goalpost <laughs> this, this, this week. So that'll be a few nuances that if you're not familiar with the Arena League game that you'll get used to. Um, so we have the rebound structure. Mm -hmm. We have the goalpost. We have your traditional extra point field goal setup, just like in normal football. But what's cool about Arena League is you can score in multiple ways. Yes. And really one exciting aspect of the game that we missed last time was the rebound nets and the rebound nets sit adjacent to that goal post for the field goals and that's a live ball it's fair game it's fair game that ball if you kick a field goal that ball comes off of that thing guess what you catch it guess what we're doing we're taking it to the house right now we also have what's called a deuce so what a deuce is is if you have the kickoff and you actually kick it through the uprights that is two points for the kicking team all right so we are definitely going to be going for some deuces and then we have another little interesting rule out the called the rouge the rogue the rogue, rogue. Oh, look the at you rogue. Being with your grammar the I'm, rouge i'm fluently <laughs> bad at french i tell you that <laughs> um, so what that is that's if the ball is bouncing around in the end zone and the receiving team the player trying to take the ball back gets it he's in the end zone that team then the kicking team then can go in tackle him in the end zone and that's one point for us. So it's like a reverse safety, yeah. if you will. Yeah. Right? Now the team, the receiving team still does take the ball. Correct. There's no change of possession or anything like that. Mm -hmm. It's just an extra, it's just another way of scoring some points. It's just another way to light it up. So get get out of the end zone. You better get out you, when the ball is kicked. You better have that fire under you, as one of my, one of my coaches like to say. Yes, you, you got to have that fire. You want to have that burn. You're going to run like a deer. <laughs> shout out to Coach Walker. Run like a deer. <laughs> Speaking of shout outs, perfect segue, babe. Uh, we'd like to thank Lockhart Home Inspection. Before you buy it, let us buy it. Peace of mind is what you'll find with Lockhart Home Inspections. 970-295-9646. True Blue Home Service Alley. Handyman services when you don't have the time, tools, or skill. Remember, True Blue Home Service Alley, serving all of Northern Colorado. And Get More RE, Jackie Dvorak, and Get More Real Estate, helping you with new construction, first time home buying and selling. 970-221-ASKJ, GetMoreRE.com. Luminate Mortgage Loans. Experience the Luminate Home Loans difference with Mike Campbell by your side. Mike is Northern Colorado's lender for reverse mortgage lending for seniors and home loans for purchasing or refinancing. 970-405-4681. And thank you, everybody. So uh, real quick here, we do want to introduce our starting lineup for the offense before we get started. As we said, number 13, Jason Whitaker, will be the quarterback duties. He's a 6'5", 225 stud out of Davenport University. Running backs, Troy Evans Jr., number 7, 5'9", 205, Marshall University. Kadarius Campbell, also helping out back there, 6'2", 210, St. Francis University. Then we got that hands team, those receivers, those skill players. Who we got there, baby? We got Mr. Steven Newbold Jr. and my boy D. Wash right there, all right? Steven Newbold, six foot 180 from Tennessee State University. And then Mr. Demarcus D. Wash, as we said. And what's cool about D. Wash is y'all will probably remember he is a former local player for the Colorado mm -hmm. Crush, our previous Arena League team. So D. Wash bringing that veteran experience, that leadership presence to the locker room that you're looking for. You know, you've got a mixture of guys. You've got young guys. You've got 
college guys just graduating. You've got guys that have been in the league, and you you know you're going to look to those older guys for some leadership. And uh, I think we see D. Watch. Not only is he a force on the field, hopefully he'll be a force in the locker room as well. So, also starting for that offensive line, Nazir Nas Jones, six foot, two ninety five, out of Dean College. We got Mr. A.J. Wilson, number 73 there, 6'3", 305 from Colorado State Pueblo. And number 70, Lucas Rodriguez, 6'5", 370 out of St. Thomas University, the big fella anchoring it. So Let's definitely psyched Park about the guys, State. definitely yeah. ready to watch this game get going here shortly. Yeah, man, I talked to Lucas Rodriguez before the game, man, and then anyone who watched the last game knows that he was kind of in a – little altercation with the other team, but I told him, I was like, hey, man, you know, I like to see the fire. I like to see the fire. I like to see you get rough and rowdy out there, man. That that pumps me up, and I know that pumps up everybody else, and you've seen after after that happened, the team just started scorching. Yeah, it was energy. I mean, it did electrify the crowd. I really liked that energy as well. You know, they knew it was a semi-pro team, all this and that, but it was still game time. It was These guys have been practicing. They've been hungry, waiting for this opportunity to be able to take their talents out on the field. And, you know, did they ever? You know, we talked with Coach, like I said, started out a little slow, obviously, the first game. But once they got cooking, baby, they was hot. Oh, they were they were ready to go. And, you know, I give big props out to uh, what I call the junior mints. I know it's probably not a nickname they want, but it's what they're getting right now until they tell me otherwise. But Troy Evans Jr. and Steven Newbold Jr., man, they had a they had a heck of a game. They just they really took over. And then shout out to Darius Campbell, too, the power man, man. I mean, he was just trucking it in, you know, the power man, man. Power, That's his name now. The power man. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So very, very excited. Obviously, we've just got a little 15 minutes plus before game time starts here. And, uh, you know, talking with Coach Shaw before the game, he said different opponent, same story, right? He mm -hmm. says, we're going to bring the same way every week. He's like, Cedar Rapids are in front of us right now, and we're going to look to dominate. And Obviously, with the talent that we put together, the coaching staff with Coach Shaw and Coach Brooks in there leading these men. We talk about Coach Brooks' defensive schemes. He's going to put the guys in position to make the plays. But just trust your coaching staff and throw your talents out there, and you just make it happen. So very excited to see that. Yeah, absolutely. We're going to have to take advantage of any miscues that the River Kings have today. And we definitely will with the defense that we have set up. Last game, I mean, we had, what, five interceptions in the last game? Yeah. I, I, don't see why we couldn't do the exact same thing tonight. The ball hawking, yes. The defense was ball hawking mm -hmm. hardcore in that last contest. Yep. And they're just athletes everywhere all over the field, and we look to see a little bit more of that. Absolutely. Speaking of looking to see a little bit more of that, Brand Designs and Just AI Media, Teacher Tracy is your web design and AI connection. She builds and maintains websites and also help you navigate the world of artificial intelligence. Branddesigns.com and AI.com.media. Mal Insurance, licensed insurance agent focusing on Medicare and senior health solutions. When you have questions, he has the answers. 970-302-0114. True Blue Home Service Ally, handyman services when you don't have the time, tools, or skill. Remember True Blue Home Service Ally, serving all of Northern Colorado. Pinocchio's Prime, serving up handcrafted prime rib dishes. It's prime time for prime rib. Located at 804 8th Street, downtown Greeley. Reservations are recommended. 303-827-8945. And as we get ready, they're bringing the players out on the field now here, doing the introductions. We don't really know a whole lot about this Cedar Rapids River Kings team. I know they played last week, or last week and kind of put it on a team from St. Louis. So we'll still learn a little bit about them as they go along. They are technically from the other arena football league. We are the National Arena League, and they are the uh, Indoor Arena Football League, I believe is the way it's pronounced. Correct. So technically not a part of our league, but they've stepped up graciously, provide us with another regular season opponent, mm -hmm. and um, I think they may. Do you think they'll end up regretting that? Um, absolutely, absolutely. I want to know who came up with the idea of River Kings. I'm not going to get over that. Who is like, oh, you know what, Cedar Rapids, River Kings. Well, you might need to dive into that a little bit further, perhaps. I, you know what, I think it's just a, a bad name. <laughs> I think it's just a bad name. I don't care. I'm sorry. I mean, I know, like, you mentioned St. Louis, and you and I both are kind of from the St. Louis area. So I can understand a little bit of the River Kings, River Dogs. I think that's a better name for them. 
not doing this River King thing for them. Well, we're going to find out. So you can obviously hear us all being a little bit quieter than normal. They're getting ready to sing the national anthem. So we're just kind of showing a little bit of respect there. So actually what we're going to go ahead and do is while they do all that, we're going to take a quick commercial break, and uh, we'll see you guys back here in a few minutes. You're listening to your home of the Colorado Spartans, Pirate Radio 93.5 FM. And welcome back to Blue Arena, high above the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. I am Jacob Govro. Joined with me, as I said, is Devontae Branch. And as we see about 10 minutes left before the game gets started, we're going to introduce our officiating crew. Head referee, Alan Bryant. Center judge, Tanner Purick. Head line judge is Bobby Albee. Line judge is Sean Burrow. And the back judge is Dave Prather. So thank you, a big thank you out to our officiating crew, putting themselves in danger out there, running all over the place on this <laughs> tiny field, trying to dodge these guys. Shout out to all the people that are right around the arena, man. Shout out to them. They're they're really putting themselves in danger. I don't <laughs> think I want to catch one of them coming across, to be honest with you. Yes, absolutely. You are in play if you are anywhere mm. around this field. Um, if you're not familiar, they've moved the stands back several rows and revealed a nice care a uh, little little – alleyway around the field mm -hmm. and we've got fans all the way around the field so you are part of the action whenever you come to this game so if you aren't just enjoying listening to us on the radio <laughs> come on down here 
Check out the game. It is going to be totally action-packed. Um, the guys are definitely psyched and getting ready to go. Looks like we've got a good arriving crowd already. We've got, we, it looks like we already have as many people as we had for the exhibition game. Absolutely. So we still got a little bit more time left. But uh, Who's not enjoying listening to us? I mean, come on. <laughs> listen, listen to our – we're so soothing. Are you kidding me? Get out of here. Well, you could put, you could put the headset in your phone, in your ear, you know, like the old guys, you know, when you're at the baseball game. Mm -hmm. And you see the guy listening to the radio broadcast while watching the game. So if you guys want to do that, you can do that. You know what I think would be a cool idea? They have all of this AI now, and now you can put on those headsets, right? And you can be immersed in the game. They should do that, and then hear our voices while they're there. <laughs> Silky Smooth, is that what S you're saying? I think I'm going to start going by Silky Smooth. I Silky. like the way that sounds yeah. now. Yeah, well, I mean, I have Stowaway J, so. Stowaway J. Silky Smooth, Devontae Branch. Silky, silky Ooh. Smooth. <laughs> I'm getting it patented. <laughs> you are getting it patented. 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 Say that five times fast. Speaking of which, let's thank a couple of our title sponsors. Top Notch Plumbing, Heating and Air, on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties. TopNotchPlumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eaton, and Kersey. On the go breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and rock solid inspiration. FitRx is a non gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit Rx.com. Yes, thank you everyone very much. This could not be possible without you, so we really, really appreciate all the help and sponsoring. So here we are, game one, technically game one. Mm -hmm. We got a long season still to go. Um, we got this home game here. We go on the road for about three weeks before we come back. So um, definitely you want to come out and get a part of this. So we're just excited to be a part of it as well. Oh, absolutely. And we were talking to Coach Shaw earlier. He actually, right before COVID, 2019 season, he actually was a coach. As you said, he grabbed a cup of coffee, Yeah, basically. he had a cup of coffee <laughs> with the Kings. <laughs> and uh, they closed down because of COVID, and they – got back in 2023 so so last year uh so i mean the, the coaching staff and everything is going to be new yeah exactly like d was saying um coach shaw has a little bit of experience with these guys but totally different ownership different mm -hmm. situation all together now so yeah we look to see what we could do to him for sure um, very excited for the opportunity and looks like the guys are coming out to midfield now for the coin toss we're going to see who that is some gentlemen shake hands yeah, Sam Hammond. Welcome to tonight's Colorado Spark football game. River Kings, you're the visiting team. This is a heads. This is a tails. Heads. heads. What is the call? Philip Lindsay will make the toss. It is a heads. Colorado won the toss and is elected to defer. What end would you like to receive? You're going to receive just like you are. Good luck, gentlemen. Play hard. Have fun. Thank you, Philip. Make some noise for and there it is. Cedar Kings. Cedar Rapids River Kings. We put it together there. Uh, they're going to receive the ball. They'll, de they'll be defending the north or east end end zone, I guess. We'll be on the south or the west end. So we've got about 4.30 left to go here before game time kicks off. So we're gonna take a quick break one last time before we get this game going. You are listening to Colorado Spartans versus the Cedar Rapids River Kings on your home for Spartan football, Pirate Radio 93.5.
Spartan fans, let's make some noise for the opening kickoff of the inaugural season of your Colorado Spartans. Welcome back, and we are started. The kickoff is away. Cedar River Kings receive the ball, and they are tackled at about the 14-yard line. Long, Looks like the lineman's going to come in about right at the 14-yard line as the River Kings take over. It's going to be exciting right now. It's the inaugural, the inaugural kickoff. Let's the inaugural right kickoff. Let's get it going, baby. There. We're come ready. On, arena. <laughs> there we go. There we go. So we're going to be looking at the River Kings. Yep. we got the River Kings coming up here. Looks like Verlin Reed is the starting quarterback here. And I believe Coach was talking about the, the set of wheels on Cedar Rapids River right. Kings quarterback. And what did Coach say? He said, we're going to cut him down. Oh, we're going to cut that tree down. He said he wants Quit. to run. He likes to move around. But we're going to cut that down. So here we are. 20 seconds left on the play clock. Game just underway. First and 10 from the 14-yard line. Men go in motion. The ball snapped. He steps back. He looks to the right. He looks left. He throws it over the middle. The pass is incomplete around incomplete the 25-yard line. Looking for number 14, Daniel Hugan. Fell up a little bit short. Kind of got the short arm on that first pass, D. I'm going to be honest with you, man. If, if he's going to be looking to pass, it's going to be a rough, rough day for him if that's how we're starting it off. Yeah, he might have those little jitters, right? We all have those. We all got to shake that off a little bit. So, yeah, he'll shake that off, and uh, we'll see what they get up here to do in the next one. There's about... 13.54 left to go. They break their huddle as the River Kings come out. They get down on their three-point stance. The Spartans are lining up, getting in formation. He sends his men in motion. He cuts across back to middle. Two men off to his left. They come across the line. That's a quarterback sneak. He takes it off the left, and he is snagged. Short. Oh, yeah, yeah. I think it's right at the line of scrimmage yeah, almost. Justin Castile getting there with a nice little ankle clip. Okay, I'll take that. But again, I mean, here they go. They're going to try to run the ball. I think they've seen... Just from that first pass, it's going to be kind of rough to get it going. Well, and and make it, you know, say it, prove it. Just like Coach said, we're going to cut him down right on that very first play. What happens? Cut him down. Defense comes up. Game over. Justin Castile coming from the opposite end too, which is a, a great, Spartans great play. Fans, let's make some third down noise. As we lay line up here, the clock ticks down. Ten seconds on the play clock. Reed looks left and right. He sends both men in motion, split off to the sides, and it's a handoff. He's up to the right side. He breaks one tackle, and he's down at about the 21-yard line. Number two, Tremont Bright with the carry. A short pickup. Coming out to the about the 23-yard line. Again, again, Castile coming across. We're going to be looking at a fourth and two from the 22-yard line. Defense. Looks like Javarius Defense. Thompson just made it. Made a jump in. Defense! Let's go, Spartans hands, fourth down! The men in motion. He looks left and right. He evades a little bit of the sack. Oh, and there's pressure. Oh, and he is down. It looks like the referee's coming in right at the first down marker. We're looking for an indication of whether or not it's the first down or not. Looks like Mr. Sam Hammond and Amari Sia got in there. Getting in on the action. Hey, they're going to make this man scramble. He's going to have to scramble. I mean, there's too much pressure. We got Sam Hammond, Quentin Peoples, and Jeff Luke on the line. It's like we're going to see what's, whether the play is, whether they're going to measure. Looks like the officials are discussing what the actual call is. They haven't moved the chains yet. And here they come out to do a measurement. Our first measurement. Yeah. Th of, of, of the season. The uh, inaugural measurement. Now. The inaugural. <laughs> this measurement was brought to you by Top Notch Plumbing, Heating, and Air. On call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. And they are stopped. There we go, boys. There it is. Turn That's what we like to down. see. There's some energy. Oh, the guys are bouncing. Around. They're happy. Start. What a big defensive stand on that first offensive offense for the River field. Kings. Coach Brooks's defense standing stout. Put them in the right place, field, and here they go. The line to gain. First down, Spartans. Let's go, Spartans, baby. So that'll be a first and 10 from the 24-yard line for the Spartans. The referee rolls the clock. Play clock clicking down, 22 seconds left. Big Jason Whitaker back there, as we talked about. Let's launch it. Let's launch it. Let it lose first. Think that's what's happening? I say just, just test them. Just see, just see what to. happens. Let's see if they can keep up. Like I said, we've got our men split left and right. 
Evans and Newbold. Oh, it's a handoff to Kadarius, and he is oh. tackled in the backfield. That was, are tackled for a short loss. that was a good Coming play. Up, that was down. a good play. Kadarius Campbell with the carry. Looks like Malik Allen got there pretty yeah. quickly. River Kings all over that. They sniffed that fake out, brought him down behind the line of scrimmage. I'm not going to let that concern us, though. That's that's the first play. We're good. That's yep. one play. Let's get it. Yep. yep. Maybe we were mistaken about the bomb downfield. Well, I, <laughs> what happens now? Let's <laughs> let us see. Now they're going to bomb the downfield. <laughs> so it looks like a one-yard loss on the play. There is 11-15 left to go in the first quarter. Second 11. River Kings 0, Spartan 0. Whitaker sends his men in motion. He looks to left. He's got a receiver over on that left. Number Yo, seven. Troy Evans, baby. Yes, sir. Troy Evans getting a part Jason of the Jackson action. Nice pass. little quick little hitch. And she goes closer hey, to Troy Evans down. has got that speed, too. Troy Evans has got that speed. This, he's going to get it. And Whitaker is looking over to the sideline, looking for a play to call in. Coach Shaw sends him out there. Look at Troy Evans dancing. He's ready, man. I, you feel that energy as the crowd trickles in. It fills up more and more. So the Spartans step to the line. Whitaker sends his both men in motion. Evans and Newbold. He looks left. He looks right. He passes it into the end zone. Oh, oh man. Oh, in and out of the hands. That was right on the money, too. Steve Newbold usually got them receiver silk hands. Just yep. cradling that ball, unfortunately. That's all right. That's all right. We're going to get back into it. Wide open. Hey. I already like what I'm seeing. Perfect accuracy. And look at the toss. Yeah, beautiful throw by Whitaker. Spiral, everything you're looking for. Puts it right in there, unfortunately. Newbold coming up a little bit short, but that's right. You can be sure that he's not going to want to do that ever again. Oh, no. He's going to make up for it. I, I can almost guarantee you that. These junior mints are going to go wild today. <laughs> <laughs> so here the, the Spartans break their huddle. Whitaker is ready. He sends both men in motion once again. Up. Oh, looks like we got a, a whistle. There's a flag on the play. Looks, like, Looks like a little bit of jump. We're going to find out from the official what that call was. He's looking around trying to figure that out as well. It seemed Offside. pretty obvious. Defense number 61, unabated to the quarterback. Five-yard penalty. Play results in a first down. And there you go. That five-yard penalty on the River Kings results in a first down for the Spartans. Mm -hmm. this, is, this is where we take advantage of the mistakes now. If they're going to give us free yardage, let's take it. Right? What, we're first and ten now? We have... The playbook is wide open. Yep, first and 10 from looks like right at that 10 yard line. So they might be able to squeeze out one more first down before the, before the touchdown, but I think I see it going in. The clock clicks down, nine seconds on the player clock. Ball snap, Whitaker looks left. He's got a man open in the flat, one-handed catch by Newbold. He spins off the board and he is man. taken down at about the three yard line. Looks, looks like, like we've got some more some more laundry on the field. We're going to see what that call is for the officials once again. Trying to clean it up here a little bit. We've got a penalty heavy early play. We'll wait to see what that call is from the official. Illegal defense. First down. Well, it looks like oh. there was an illegal defense. So the defensive lineup, and we'll get into more of that, the uh, the details, the minutia of the game. The uh, defensive lineman is a little bit different. We've mm -hmm. talked about the Mac and Jack linebacker. Linebacker duty is a little bit different than in your prof normal NFL professional college league. Uh, the linebackers are a little restricted on where they can travel. They can travel left and right. They can travel within five yards, five yards of that uh, line of scrimmage. So a couple little things that yeah. are a little different. It, it's going to take some getting used to to uh, everybody who watches the NFL, regular man football, it's going to take a minute to get adjusted to this. But what a catch, though. Yes, what beautiful a catch. catch. One hand, and, and, and the, the out of bounds is out of bounds. The, the wall is free. <laughs> <laughs> so here we go. Spartans, they're lining up. Whitaker's ready. He sends his men. He's a fake handoff. He scrambles to the left. Come on, baby. He shakes one tackle, and there are oh. three men all around him. So Whitaker, unfortunately, they did the fake handoff. Tried to do a quarterback sneak there to the left. Unfortunately, brought down by three men. Looks like about a uh, five-ish yard loss on the play. I mean, again, I'm not upset about this. You know, it 
to second down now. They gave us free yardage. I think it's actually going to be a little bit easier to actually throw in there. So I'm throwing Troy Evans that slant route again. Yeah, let's hit him again. You got the accuracy. Let's throw it in there. It's, it's going to be open. He was open. Yeah, our guys are making space when we can see that already. As the Spartans break the huddle, there's 8.20 left in the first quarter. Spartans 0, River Kings 0, still looking for our first points of the game. Spartans threatening here early, though. Whitaker sends two men right in motion. He looks left. He looks right. He scrambles for It's a quarterback sneak. Go, He's heading for the end zone. Here we go, baby. Oh, and hey. Whitaker is brought down short of the goal line, about the four-yard line. So a six-yard pickup there on the scramble. Hey, I take it, Jay Witt. I take it. Yeah, I'm, like the way he showed the legs. He's gonna. I'm going to start calling him the taker. He's going to be taker from here on out. Yeah, if it's not there, he is gone. Oh, yeah. There's Whit not much time to wait around. I, I love how quickly he reacts to that, too. You know, he's not sitting back waiting for someone to get open. If they're not open right then and that defense got that pressure, let's go, Jay Witt. Yeah, he knows that. It's a smaller field, yeah. quicker game. That that internal clock that that quarterback keeps is going to have to be a little bit different yeah. in this game, you know? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, Jay Witt, 6'5", too. Go ahead and stretch out. Stre go ahead, Mr. Stretch. Go ahead and do it now. And looks like the play clock was winding down, so there's going to be a timeout by the Spartans. we got a 60-second timeout. We're going to take a quick break as we are broadcasting here from Blue Arena, from the Ron's Bonds press box. Spartan zero, River King zero. We'll be right back. And welcome back to Blue Arena as their Colorado Spartans take on the Cedar Rapids River Kings. The Spartans are threatening. We're at third and four from the four yard line looking to score a touchdown. It is still 0-0 with about 7.20 left in the first quarter. And uh, we're threatening, trying to get, a, get, a, get some points put on the board, take an early lead. I, I mean, we could do a back shoulder throw right here. I yeah. mean, we got, we got Troy Evans out there lined up wide. I mean, we can even do a nice little replay too. I mean, we tried doing the pitch out to Kadarius earlier in the game. I mean, we've held the ball, too, for a long time. And here we go as the play clock winds at 25 seconds. Two men split out left. That's Newbold and Evans. Whitaker sends him in motion to his left. He looks left. He looks right. He's got a man open. Oh, deflected at the line of scrimmage by the River Kings defense. Unfortunately, the ball falls incomplete on the turf. We're going to be looking at fourth and four for the Spartans. Looks like Corey Tucker was there on that nice little tip. I mean, good way to be in placement there, but uh, that's, a, that's a play that we can run again and get back. I think so. I think he had the window. I think it just closed. He had him open. He was looking left and right, and just a little bit late on that throw. Not necessarily late, but just a little bit late for his receiver. Mm -hmm. Opening up, hole closed up. Defensive line got his hand up in the air. So 10 seconds on the play clock, fourth and four. Here go our Spartans. One left, one right. That's Newbold and Evans. Ball snap. Whitaker. Yep. Oh, whoop. jump. There we go. Mr. Hankey. Mr. Hankey Man. on the mat. <laughs> what a, I mean, if they're going to keep giving us all of this, let's just keep making them jump. And we're going to see what that call is. Offside. Defense, number 92. Half the distance to the goal. Still fourth down. Hey, oh, way to stay disciplined, baby. And as the, as the official there just said, it is only half the distance to the goal. So, you know, you're clo that close to the goal line, you're not getting that automatic first down. Mm -hmm. So still looking at fourth and two instead of a first and goal from the one in this game. So fourth and two, Spartan zero, River Kings zero. 15 seconds left on the play clock. You guys need to get up to the line, get this thing moving. I love the discipline we're showing, though, so far. 
This has been amazing. I mean, they got three penalties already yep. to our zero. They're I shooting mean, themselves in the foot early on for sure. They just keep giving us more life. Keep doing it. Here we go. And a man in motion. Oh, it looks like maybe the Spartans were about to get this play clock expired and it possibly they called a timeout just before that. That is correct. So the Spartans, unfortunately, burn up their second timeout of the first half already. Down to only one timeout left. Probably need to get that moving around a little bit there on the play clock winding down to keep a hold of those timeouts. You're going to need them later on in the game. Yeah, I think we're just trying to be a very strategic. You know, we got chess players down there as coaches, you know. And so they're just trying to be as strategic as possible. Uh, as the season goes on, this is going to be wide down much quicker the cadence of the game is going to be going on i think there's a lot of nerves because this is the first official game of the season uh and so like last game it will wind down we'll be fine and here we go this the spartans come back up to the line the play clock winds whitaker's ready he's got both men left and right newbold evans they go in motion he hands the ball up oh, there's a fumble on the play <laughs> back on that. No. and he picked it back up <laughs> and he's taken <laughs> down short uh, Troy Evans, the ball bounced off the rug. He picked it up on the bounce and miraculously turned back around to go the other direction. Unfortunately, ran out of real estate, taken down for a loss, and the Spartans turn over the ball on downs uh, just like the River Kings. I mean, positive side of this, it could have been much worse. They could have picked <laughs> it up and we could have scooped it. So, you know, what an athletic play by Troy Evans. We've seen two athletic plays by him already. Uh, I mean, that one's not what we're looking for, but. Flash of the skills. It's a flash of the skills, baby. And he's, he's got it. He's got it. And so we're going to be fine. We're going to be fine. I have no worries about this. Let's get this defense rolling again. They're not going to be able to pass on us. So, unfortunately, we do turn the ball over on downs. There is no punting in the Arena League. That is National Arena League. That's another thing you're going to want to pay attention to and that just brings a little bit more excitement out there those fans that don't care for the kicking game this is this is your sport so the river kings break huddle and they come up to the line still down zero zero we got them pinned deep they're about the six yard line Let's see what happens here he's got two men to his right they move in motion up and it looks like maybe someone started a little bit early false start you see the like. false start penalty We'll wait for the official to come online and give us the actual call here shortly. But it seemed pretty obvious that, that the River Kings jumped. A couple guys looks like maybe they jumped a little bit early. Offense, number 72, half the distance to the goal. And there it is, half the distance to the goal line. So that backs them up a little bit further. Getting a little nervous in there now whenever the quarterback is taking the hike in the end zone. Is it time for a safety? I think it's time to put those hands up. Put those hands in the air. Egyptian style. Let's get it out here. You know what I'm saying? Let's get that safety. <laughs> here we go, defense. As the River Kings break, it's first and 13. Six minutes left in the first quarter. Spartan zero, River Kings zero. He's got a man left, a man right. He sends both men in motion. There's a crossing route, the handoff to his running back, and he is tackled at about the sixth yard line after about a two, three yard gain. All that for that. I mean, he took off explosively, but our boys are getting in there quick, man. I mean, Castile, Castile is everywhere. That man cannot be stopped. He is he is on it. He is on it. That was Tremont Bright with the carry for the River Kings taken down after a short gain. So they line up here, 15 seconds left on the play clock. Second and about eight. Two men off to his right. They both go motion across the line. He fakes the handoff. Oh, there's he almost Come has on, baby. it in Come the on, end baby. zone. And he evades the sack. He's running down the right sideline. He's at the 25, the 20. Ooh, and he is nice taken out of bounds at about the 20 yard line of the Spartans after a very, very solid run for Verlin Reed. Like Coach said, he's going to take off and run. We're going to try to cut him down. You can't cut him every time, I guess. I mean, that's what's going to happen. This is the only way they're going to be able to move the ball. They've tried throwing the ball multiple times, it has not worked. We left a little bit of a space and they got out there, but that's going to be closed down here very shortly. I have no no doubt about it. Yeah, those little things there. He's going to have to throw the ball to score this game. So Absolutely. as the River Kings break huddle, it is a first and 10 at the Spartans 23 yard line. Two men, one man left, one man right. He sends him in motion. The ball's hiked and it's bombed to these. What I say? <laughs> what I say? Interception. They not and going on us. We talked about this. Uh-oh, and we got a flag on the play, too. It's probably uh, some excessive something, a celebration, or some, and we got another flag oh. in the air. Come on now. Coach so. is getting into it now. So we had an interception at about the six-yard line. Yeah, it was Cyrus Taylor with the interception. I mean, 
If it's excessive anything, it's excessive jumping ability because that man jumped up. Yeah, we're definitely, we've got a lot of stuff on the ground here. Coaches are yelling. Coach Brooks is excited. The guys are yelling around back and forth. They're trying to sort out the bodies basically at this point. Looks like Troy Evans got his helmet knocked off on that. So what a what a beautiful interception. They took the oh. they took a, a chance headed towards the end zone. Cyrus Taylor jumps up. Huge play. Let's go! And they are definitely excited about that right now. The officials still trying to figure out on the field exactly what all is going on as the Spartans intercepted the ball with a short return. Got a little muddled there up against the sideline, some pushing and shoving. And it looks like they're about finally figured it all out, and we're going to see what the call is. Ruling the field is an interception. During the return, we have a blindside block defense, half the distance to the goal. We also have a sideline warning on the coach. That is their first. So it looks like uh, maybe Coach Brooks is that. Is that got a sideline warning for coming out ce celebrating with his guys? Hey. And it looks like a block, an illegal block by the Spartans on the return after the interception. So it backs us up. So it looks like we're going to take a 60-second media timeout. Here, still 0-0 Spartans River Kings from Blue Arena. And welcome back to Blue Arena, broadcasting live from the Ron's Bonds Press Box high above the field here in Loveland. I am Jacob Gover. I'm joined by my partner, Devante Branch. And it's 4.35 left in the fourth quarter, or the first quarter. Still 0-0. Spartans just intercepted the ball. A couple of penalties pushed him back. We're looking at a first and 10 from our own four-yard line. And we're getting ready to play. Jay Witt has two men out right. Looks like Big D Wash and Mr. Steve Newbold. He's up. Whitaker is on, scrambling. Baby. Yeah, put that truck on him. Put that truck on him. <laughs> he evaded a nice tackle there off to the left. That's Kadarius. Kadarius, baby. Yes, Kadarius running it for us there after a short gain for Kadarius Campbell, number 34. But we got some flag on the play again. Let's see what the call is. Illegal defense, number 56, lined outside the guard, five yard penalty, first down. And there it is, illegal defense lined up outside the guard. We talked about the little bit differences there. You got to have those shoulders matched up with the man across the line from you. Uh, you're going to get an illegal defense penalty called on you. That's so that gives us five yards. So it's going to be another first and ten from the nine-yard line. Still 0-0 here. Whitaker's got Campbell next to him. He's got D. Wash off to the right. He looks left. He fakes, he runs, he scrambles, he's got a pass. Oh, oh broken up. Man. D. Wash there. Man, he's got good hands. Unfortunately, defense got in there, kind of broke it around a little bit. So D. Wash coming up a little bit short. There's two defenders there. I mean, the ball was on the money, but fitting in that little that little pocket there on the run too, that's, yeah, that's tough. I, good throw. Great throw. I think he should have just took off and run. <laughs> we probably would have had 15 yards right there. That's okay though. That's okay. That's okay. So, like we said, after the penalty, it's second and five, 345 to go. Spartans, Whitaker sends his two men in motion. The ball's, the snap is fumbled. The ball's passed. Ooh, that was a forward pass. It looked like a backwards pass, but I believe that Whitaker passed the ball forward with two hands. That is nope. correct. Fourth down here. 
I think we had the penalty on the play, so I believe the, they said the fourth down, but I believe we're still dealing with the third down. Third and five here. As the Spartans are still looking to get something going. That's all right, you know they will. We've got too many weapons down there. And he still almost made that play up, too. He still almost made that play up. Let, let go of some of these nerves. It's fine. Let's take a deep breath. Take a deep breath. Second quarter is going to be yeah. much better. We'll get it all right. 20 seconds left on the play clock. Three minutes to go. Whitaker's got his men lined up. Newbold right. Evans left. They go in motion. He looks to his right. He's got his man all day. Oh. Uh -huh. Came up a little bit short on the route. He missed his receiver, unfortunately. Looks like there was just some miscommunication there. Yeah, they're kind of pointing back and forth. Number seven, Troy Evans was the receiver that Whitaker was trying to get the ball to. So now we're going to bring up that fourth down. Now, fourth and five from the Spartans. Oh, about eight and a half yard line. The clock's ticking down. 2.20 to play in the first quarter. Still 0-0 here at Blue Arena. The Spartans are chatting things over. There's 12 seconds left in the game clock or the play clock. You really need to get up to the line and get this thing off. You don't have to burn through that third and final timeout. He's got men lined up. There's three seconds left. He sends D. Wash in motion. The ball's away just, just in, time. in time. He sees the man oh. open. Ooh. Man. I mean, he had, to, he had to get the ball off. I, I don't blame him. He had, just had to get that ball off. Had to get the ball off, unfortunately. So looking for Steve Newbold on that. Pass is incomplete. So the, but we're going to turn the ball over on downs again. It's just a back and forth game right now. We call that an offensive struggle. It is. I mean, it's, it's crazy because we have no penalties against us right now. I mean, we have one with on know, the interception, sure, yeah. And the but coach, right? But they have five penalties against them already. We have to take advantage of what they are giving us right now. That's what this game is going to be about, minor mistakes. Who is going to win? the game from penalties. And, what's, and what we're giving right now is we're giving them the ball back. We are. <laughs> we are. I mean, we're showing that we are more disciplined and that we can do this. Once our communication comes in, our nerves wear down, you'll see a different ball yeah, game. I think I that's promise. what's going on there too. Yeah. And as the River Kings break huddle, they got three down, down linemen. It's going to be first and goal from the nine yard line. Two men out left to right. He sends them in motion. And the ball is handed off. He takes it up the middle. He's trudging. He's grinding. Rip it out, baby. They're fighting for the ball. After a very, very short gain for number two, Tremont Bright there on the play. You love to see the swarm of Spartans around. You love to see the swarm of Spartans every time. No surrender. Fly no retreat. to the ball. <laughs> That's over time. Fly about. to the ball, baby. That defense is definitely swarming. They are flying all over the place. Looks like a short three-yard gain on that carry for Bright. So we're looking at second and seven, a minute and a half left in this first quarter. Still 0-0. We're looking at for that first score of the game. And the River Kings break huddle, and they're coming out. They're wanting to be the team that puts that first score on the board. Spartans trying to say no. Got two men out to the left of the quarterback, Verlin Reed. He's got one running back next to him. Sends his men in motion. The ball snapped. He looks left. He sends it to the end go. zone. Oh. There we go. You're not doing it. I'm sorry, Mr. Verlin. You're not doing it. He had number seven, Donovan Johnson, sort of open in the end zone. I mean, we had Cyrus Taylor right there, too. I, I bet he was a little afraid of what happened last time. Yeah, and it almost looks like maybe he even tripped up a little bit going across the end zone, so came up a little bit short. So it's going to be third and seven, under a minute to play left here in the first quarter. Play clock is rolling, 23 seconds. They got plenty of time for that. He's got two men lined out left of him, one running back next to him. That's Bright. He sends one man out to his right in motion. The ball snapped. It's a fake handoff, and he oh, heads for the end zone, and he go. is tackled. There we go, Amari, see you, baby. Verlin Reed with the quarterback's carry on that. Picked up about three or four yards on that one. Going to bring up a fourth and two? Approximately. Hey, force this man to run. Force him to run. He has to beat us with his legs. And that's then Hawk. And then that's when, when he runs, that's when the linebacker can take off after him. Yeah, uh, absolutely. Absolutely. Your free game. You start running, you look out from everywhere. So it's, we got uh, 15 seconds left in the first quarter. It's fourth and three. For the River Kings, I don't think we're going to get this playoff. It looks like they're kind of taking their time. Now nope, we've got five seconds left. They're breaking huddle. Two seconds, winding down. And that is the end of the first quarter as the your Colorado Spartans and the Cedar Rapids River Kings are all knotted up in a defensive battle, 0-0. Zero to zero. We're going to take a quick break. We'll be back right after this on your home of the Colorado Spartans, Pirate Radio 93.5.
That's a great question. I'm about to find out and text you. <laughs> And we are back here at Blue Arena as the River Kings. And as I said, we are back here from Blue Arena as the River Kings attempted that fourth down conversion and they were stopped by the Spartans. So the Spartans once again take over on downs. Our defense, our defense is holding up well. If we can just get our offense nice and going right here, it's, it, this game honestly is much closer <laughs> than it should be. At yes. zero, zero. It, it, like we said, it's a defensive battle early on. We're working on a little bit of those kinks, a little bit of the oopsies, a little mm. bit of drops. But the Spartans take over first and ten from their own four-yard line. Whitaker's going to be dancing around the end zone, trying to get out of that, evading pressure. So as the play clock gets ready to wind here, like, like D said, we're still 0-0 early on. 14.56 left to play, just getting started here in the, in the second quarter. And they're gonna run, the, they run the, the play clock. Whitaker sends his two men in motion. He looks straight down the middle. He's got a man in the middle. Oh, ooh, oh, that was pass was tipped and it looks like it was intercepted. We're waiting for the call to play. The ball was intercepted. It's like Corey Tucker right there in the right place at the right time. Yep, number 17 for the River Kings. The ball was tipped off. The ball's thrown a little bit high for Troy Evans. He gets one hand on it, looks like. Unfortunately, the ball falls into the defensive back or defensive team's mm -hmm. hands. And uh, it looks like Troy's maybe even shaken up a little bit on the play as he's kind of taking his time, moving around, getting off. Well, he really had to jump and really extend for that. But I think, if anything, it's just a nice little strength. He'll be fine. Yeah, he's not being helped off. He's walking mm -hmm. off on his own power. Doesn't seem to be anything lagging. He just kind of got shook up a little bit, it looks like. Man, Unfortunately, have... though, turnover on the interception. Threw it downfield, almost as good of a punt. At least they're not buried deep again, yeah. but the River Kings are going to take over with the first and 10 in the Spartans' territory at about the 22-yard line. If anything, I, I believe in our defense, for sure. Coach Brooks' schemes run deep. <laughs> they run deep, baby. And the River Kings have men out left, men out right. Bright's close to him. The ball snapped, two men in motion. There's a handoff, Bright takes it up to the left. He breaks one tackle, and he is taken down at about the 16-yard line after a solid gain on first and 10. Looks like I still hit that first contact right there, really slowing his momentum down. Way to swarm Terrell Williams there. I mean, this is what you're going to have to do. I mean, I think they're starting to figure out that they can't really throw the ball. Finally. <laughs> but he's wearing two He's wearing two gloves, too, and I, I, I would like to believe that that is really hindering his throwing ability right now. That get that grip? Got to get that grip. So it's second and five for the River Kings from the Spartans' 16-yard line. Man left, man right for the River Kings. He sends both of them in, in motion. They do a crossing pattern. It's handed off. And he switched to the left. He breaks one tackle and he falls down at about the three yard line. The carry there by number 11, Shiloh Flanagan. A little bit of misdirection by the River Kings. He breaks one little, a little arm tackle, spins off, and manages to get a few more yards. And he reaches for the yard like that. Swipe that Showing ball that out. Hustle. Swipe that ball out. So Let's go deep. 
the River Kings are gonna take over first, oh, first and goal from the three yard line. 13 minutes and a half to play in the second quarter. One man left, one man right. Sends his men in motion. The ball snapped. And he's quarterback sneak, ah, and he is in the end, end zone. But we got a flag on the play, and I think there was a man. I think it was a defense or offensive false start on the offense. We're going to wait to hear from the official what the call is. I got if no one's celebrating, they all know it's coming back. Well, there's they're doing the old proverbial <laughs> pointing, the pointing back and forth, but it doesn't matter. <laughs> they're backing up. Here's the call. Bring it back. Well, it looks like we uh, we did not exactly get the call, but it was offsides. They did end up maybe calling the offsides. Yep, that's exactly what it looks like. like. Penalty number six. Penalty. Penalty number six. Also, you can call me Silky. You don't gotta call me D. You no call more me D. Silky. It's Silky. <laughs> you've officially you've officially taken that. I've officially taken it. It's offsetting penalties is what happened there. So we're gonna replay that down. One man left, one man right. He sends his men in motion. The ball is snapped. It's a handoff. He goes up through the middle for Bright. And there's a pile right at the goal line. No indication yet from our officiating crew of a touchdown. Looks like we're going to stop him short. Oh, he's short. It's going to be second and goal from about that one yard line for the River Kings. So still trying to find that elusive first score of the game. Mm -hmm. they're, gonna, they're definitely going to do a read option here again. All right. It's too tight to throw. They haven't been able to throw down the field anyway. What are you going to do? We know a run's coming. Yeah, yeah. Defense gets stout, gets strong. Watch that fake. As they line up, he's got two men behind him. One receiver split off to the left, tight end off to the right. The ball is handed off. It's faked. He does quarterback ah. sneak it. And yes. that is a touchdown. touchdown. Cedar Rapids River Kings. Mm. So on the quarterback sneak from Verlin Reed. The Spartans fall behind six to nothing. There's 12 minutes to go in the second quarter. They, what they did is they used number 91 in there as bait and they faked it like they're gonna hand off to him. Obviously he hasn't been in the game at all. And then he comes in, what do you think we're gonna do? Fake. And then are we gonna get our first extra point of the season or are they going for two? It looks to me like the River Kings are lining up to go for two. So maybe the kicking game is not gonna be a part of what we're seeing here. So. As the Spartans line up on defense, River Kings send man, one man right. The ball's handed off to the big, big man, number 91. Goodness, who is that? 91. Number Enoch, Enoch Tucker. Enoch. The big defensive lineman. They handed the ball off to him, and he just rumbled and stumbled into the end zone for the two point conversion as the Spartans fall behind, eight to nothing here in the second quarter. 11.36 left to play. You know, this, is, this has been a very defensive game. And, you know, minor mistakes this entire game. And we haven't made a lot. We've made one, two that's, interception. And that's what bit us. And that's exactly what bit us. We're supposed to be taking advantage of theirs, and they capitalize on our, our minor mistakes. And so we just got to get that down, and we'll be all right. No, I have to totally agree. You know, we played incredible on defense and offense in our last game. Mm -hmm. We knew the defense was going to come to play. Offense still looking to get rolling, really, to get to find their groove. And we know they're going to. So let's see what we can do with this, uh, with this offensive play here as the River Kings are getting ready to kick it off to the Spartans. I mean, last game, we really didn't start playing, playing until second half. So maybe we're a second half team, right? And we're going to come out. If we come out with full force, too, it's a wrap. Yeah, once they really get rolling, we, we saw exactly what they can accomplish. So the River Kings are all hanging out in the end zone, getting ready to kick off. We've got a couple of men deep. Steve Newbold is back there waiting to receive that kickoff. He's waiting to see where it's going to come at, and he is an electrifying player. The kick is low. He's got it at the three-yard line. Deep. He's looking left. He's looking right. He does a little hip scop. He, he dodges one defender. He takes there the guy up against the sideline, and he is tackled out of bounds after a solid return. So it's going to be, we're going to see first and 10 from about the 23-yard line of the Cedar Rapids River Kings. So nice return there. I, he gave him a nice little new bold shake step <laughs> on him. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I, thought, I really thought he was going to break that last tackle, to be honest with you. 
He's a slithery man. You got that right, Silky. So <laughs> as, there it is, I won't forget. Please don't. The ice I pray, I promise I won't. <laughs> so as the Spartans break, huddle. We're looking to get our first score of the game. Oh, we got a little equipment malfunction. The, uh, one of the mats looks like it just came dislodged from the, from the sideline. We're going to get that put back up. Got hit a little too hard. We're going to rerun that play clock. 25 seconds left. We're already lined up. I'd like to see that. It's got Troy Evans lined up in front of Whitaker. He sends two men in motion. He drops back. He looks left. He looks right. Take it off. He takes there off. Go. He's going to the 20. Come on, baby. 17. Oh, and he is upended after a nice gain by Whitaker showing the wheels. There we go. That's what we have to do. I mean, if it's not there, take it off. Let's go. The gap is there to run, right? I know you want. I know you want to throw the ball because you got a pretty ball and you can throw it. <laughs> it's a but, tight spiral. I mean, take it off, man. Let's let's go. Let's score this touchdown. Ooh, and he got hammered by a couple of different guys on that run. Really putting his body on the line for that one. It's going to be second and two for the Spartans. Play clock down to 18. Whitaker has a man left or right. He sends them in motion. Uh, they crisscross. It's a handoff. Oh, and we have once again more laundry on the field. Looks like false start. We're gonna see. I think D might be right on that. We've got too many nicknames now. Offense number three, five yard penalty, second down. And that is correct. False start on the Spartans. So that's gonna back us up a few more yards. That's gonna take that second and two and make that second and seven. As the official winds the play clock, there's 23 seconds left on that. That's 10 hard. minutes to go in the half. Spartans down eight to nothing. Whitaker has two men out right. That's D. Wash. They send him in motion. He drops back. He looks. He fakes. Take it off. Take oh, it off. he's bitten scrap. Oh, he looks like Whitaker couldn't find a guy open. He had to take off running. He got sacked. Nah, he got tackled, not sacked. After a short, short gain. It looks like this. Uh these DBs are all playing deep, and they're not letting anything deep go by. So we got to start playing the mid game here. Start getting some nice little digs, nice little in curl routes right here, and start picking them off. Start playing a little bit of Tom Brady game going on. Get that middle of the line field. Yeah. As the, the clock runs, it's third and seven. Spartans with the ball. Whitaker has two men out right. He sends them in motion. The ball snapped. He looks right. He throws there it out go. to D. Wash. D. Wash shakes and juves, and he is tackled down after a solid gain at about the 16 yard line. Let's see where the linesman sets him. He's actually gonna be out at the 15 yard line. So that is gonna bring up a fourth down. It's gonna be fourth and short. We're right here though. I do the, do the same thing, do the same thing. Yeah, he's got the men lined up since been, both men in motion. He looks hard left. He's there got his man to the right and he's at the marker. The official. Oh no. That's a first, come on. They have called it. There's a little bit of arguing back and forth between the coaching staff from the River Kings and the linesman there, but he is hammering his hand up against the bat. He is definitely indicating that it has been a first down. It was a good catch, solid catch. Troy Evans right there. Way to fight for the yardage too to get that first yard, first down gain as well. They're still discussing down Ooh. there. They have not. Oh no! No way. They have reversed it. After a short measurement, it looks like Cedar Rapids did stop the Spartans on that. That was a little tight call. Tough to see down there on the other side of the uh, the other side of the wall exactly where he came in down. But the official there on the play, same they came up a little bit short. So on that play, the Spartans will turn the ball over on downs once again. Still down eight to nothing here with eight minutes, 8.45 left in the second quarter. I'd like to thank Top Notch Plumbing, Heating and Air, on call 24 7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eden, and Kersey. On the go, breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and Rock Solid Inspiration. FitRx is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. And we thank you all once again. Jacob, it looks like they are uh, reviewing the last play to see if it was a first down indeed or not. So there's a lot of debate over it. We've got a pretty solid crowd, it looks like. We're about half full, I would say. Maybe a little bit more. We got some celebrities. We do have some oh, celebrities. Well. Okay, we have not noted, mentioned that yet. We have two exceptional athletes in the building. Both, Folks, both from Colorado. That is correct. We've got Mr. Philip Lindsay. 
and Brandon Royval. I hope I pronounced that correctly. No, that was perfect. You know me, I'm the <laughs> UFC guy. Yes, sir. Uh, Brandon Royval, the number one flyweight contender, mm -hmm. exceptional athlete. And then we've got Philip Lindsay. He needs almost no introduction to oh. anybody in Colorado, I would think. Oh, absolutely not. I mean, Colorado, born and raised. I mean, we got he from Aurora, played at CU, played for the Broncos. I mean, his, his rookie year, he was a pro bowler. You know, I believe he was the rusher. first undrafted rookie Pro Bowler in NFL history. Is that really he was the first undrafted rookie to make the Pro Bowl? Hey man, his first his first two years were exceptional. I mean, over a thousand yards both years. You know, I Phil Lindsay back at CU. I remember watching the game. I was like, man, this man is a dog. I was like, who is running this angry right now? <laughs> yes, absolutely. And then Roy Vall just finished up a five round decision victory over Brandon Moreno in the UFC flyweight division and it was a battle for five rounds if anyone is checks that out Roy Vall is an absolute animal as well you want to talk about a dog <laughs> that, raw dog that is his, nickname. his nickname that right? is his nickname <laughs> he is a raw dog he is an animal love watching him fight um, exceptional talent in that flyweight division so we are blessed and lucky to have two exceptional and Roy Vall like you said also from Denver so yep. two local homegrown talents did their thing at the professional level. Roy Vall still doing it at the top of his game. Like I said, he's going to have a championship fight coming up with the champion Pantoja here pretty soon. Pantoja, however you want to say it. <laughs> we got respect to Roy Vall. Not Roy Vall, not, no respect to the champ. <laughs> hey, champ, don't come up in here. That's the other man talking. Don't come <laughs> up in here. <laughs> so, yeah, we definitely want to talk about that a little bit because we are very happy to have those guests here in the house. Hopefully we can uh, – get them on and get to talking to them. Yeah, that would be wonderful. Hopefully we're looking for that later on. So we'll keep you guys posted on that. So still trying to figure this out. Everybody's waiting around. Might as well have a dance party out there. Come on now. <laughs> they playing the jams. Who do you love? Yeah, Stuffy it is smooth. definitely a live <laughs> atmosphere here at Blue Arena. Yes, sir. This is a game. This is a show. This is entertainment. You're going to come and watch good football, have a good time. So Definitely take advantage of the opportunity, having these Spartans come to Loveland, being our new professional arena team. Mm -hmm. Happy to be a part of that, super excited. They're gonna bring the championship home this year, that's what coach says, he's like, we're getting that gold ball. He's like, you'll see us, this oh, will yeah. be the year. Absolutely, I mean, it's pure entertainment out here. That's what it is, it's pure entertainment. If you are not with the slow paced, regular football, this is the game for you. I mean, and it's, it's right here in our home. You know, let's come out and support something local. You know, I think this uh, this team is really going to put it on a show, and it's going to show in this second half. I am sure of it. And speaking of showing, Lockhart Home Inspection, before you buy it, let us spy it. Peace of mind is what you'll find with Lockhart Home Inspection, 970-295-9646. Get more RE. Jackie Devork and get more real estate helping you with new construction, first time home buying and selling. 970-221-ASK-J-GET-MORE-RE.COM. There we go. <laughs> there we go. There we go. And you hear the excitement. We knew we were right. We, we knew, knew it was first and 10 Spartans. Who questions us? We're never wrong. <laughs> and so the offenses and defenses switch one more time as the Spartans offense retakes the field after the official review. It is going to be a first and 10 for the Spartans. There's a lot of argument back and forth. We finally got that sorted out though. Hey, don't give us the momentum. Don't give us the momentum. This is it right here. Let's take advantage of this, fellas. This is the time to get in the end zone. Show them what we're actually made of now. So it is going to be first and 10 for your Colorado Spartans from the 13-ish, can we say 13-ish? 13-ish yard line. 13 -ish, yeah. 13-ish <laughs> yard line, first and 10 for the Spartans. Still looking to get that first touchdown on the board. Whitaker has two men out wide right, two men to his left. He sends his men in motion. He looks left. He fakes. Take it off, oh, baby. There it is. Man open on the left. Uh, it's Katarius is Campbell. He, he is tackled short of the goal line. That's right. He's giving out high fives to fans along the sidelines like we talked about. You are part of this game. Of this Love game. a high five from Kadarius. And it's going to be a first and goal 
from the two yard line for your sponsor, for your Spartans. What a great completion by Whitaker on that play. Oh, great, great run, great find. Uh, you know, good for Kadarius to step back and see that his quarterback's in trouble and give him an option. Yes, right? he did. Yeah, he, he, he came off his route, turned around, and he had his man open. So it's first and goal from the two and a half, three yard line. Whitaker sends two men to motion. The ball snapped. He hands the ball off to Campbell. He is tackled Ooh. right at the goal line. I think he came, he came up a little bit a little short, short on that play, but we smell it now. Oh, he's ready. Hey, man, I say feed the bully again. Kadarius the bully, baby. Give him the ball. Let him pound it in there. You're right there. No sense. Exactly. Don't, don't risk it. Just hand that ball right off. Let the big boys push him in. First and goal. Two minute motion. Whitaker hands the ball back off again. Oh, and he, ah. we got a little bit of the back push, almost a tush push <laughs> by Whitaker. And uh, Campbell comes down. Actually, he lost a little bit of yardage on the mm -hmm. play. So it backed him up just a little bit. We like the play call. Unfortunately, execution just wasn't quite there. That's all right. Looks like Jeff Luke is checking in the game for Gadarius right now. There it is, our big man, big defensive line coming in there to give us a little bit, of, maybe a little bit of trickery, maybe a little bit of uh, get a taste of their own medicine. That's that right. Yeah, us. give it to the big man and feed him. Uh, hey, oh, he's on the right line. Let's go. Oh no, he does jump down. Let's see if maybe he reported as eligible. Whitaker under center. It's Come a quarterback on, sneak, and That's he it. is up. No, nope, he no, crossed he the plank. <laughs> he crossed the plank. Go ahead and stop running, brother. <laughs> the, the call on the play is a touchdown. The ball was fumbled yeah. as he crossed the goal line, but he broke the plane just short or just before that ball came loose. So Spartans touchdown. Here we go. Here we go. There it is. Nice Jason push push. Whitaker with the quarterback sneak as the Spartans put points on, uh, well, we say they put points on. They indicated a touchdown. It appears as if the officiating crew is still having some debate trying to work that out, but we had the indication of a touchdown. We're gonna wait to see what the actual official call mm -hmm. is right here. The ruling is a touchdown. And there it is. Thank the you. ruling on the field is a touchdown. I mean, why don't they come up here and ask us? We, say, we <laughs> said it was a first down earlier. We just, you know what I'm saying? And now they want to come out here and act like. Ah, I see. We've, we've got the, uh, looks like the River Kings are challenging the call on the field, saying that that was not a touchdown. And, you know, we talk about having this bird's eye view from the Ron's Bonds press box high above the field here in beautiful Blue Arena. Thank you to Ron's Bonds for sponsoring the press box. Ron's Bonds, I'll get you out. 970-351-6734, ronsbondsco.com. So yeah, they're gonna do a little review. They're gonna talk about it. I mean, it looked like from up here that that ball was across the line it, long before it came out. 100%. First of all, it's not a very kingly thing to do <laughs> to challenge this. Just take the touchdown like a man, that's okay. That's well, all right. But you know, you you on the flip side of that, you talk about a king, he's always right. Well, so there then might we're, be some debate. We got two kings up here then because we haven't been <laughs> wrong yet. No. Okay, so Silky silky Smooth over here is is ready. That is 100% correct. <laughs> I, don't even, I don't even know why we would argue. I, I don't, there is no arguing. I don't know who's arguing. So like I said, we're still trying to work that out right now. There is uh, six minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half here in Blue Arena in lovely Loveland, Colorado. The Spartans look like they put their first six points up of the game on the board. We're waiting for a little bit of discussion from the officials for the official review. It looks like we're about to get that. Hold on one second. We'll see what the call, actual call is on the field. Oh, they look, they seem pretty convinced that it's, uh, that it's gonna be a, an extra point here. We're still uh, waiting, but. Mr. Lucas Rodriguez down there is dancing. Uh, <laughs> Lucas, when you hear this, brother, I will give you some dance lessons. Okay, that Dougie ain't looking so fresh, but that's okay. That's okay. Looks like we're kicking a field goal. Yes, we are. Here we go. So the call on the play must have been a touchdown because we're lining up for the extra point. Darian Crow getting his first action of the season. Yes. As we stated earlier, no uh, no goal posts in the exhibition game. Right. So he's lining up here to put tag one up there on the on the board for us. This is a smart call. There's no reason to go for two. Uh, our momentum's starting to shift now. Let's get the safe points and let's keep working. Let's keep grinding right, right now. Exactly, That's not. this is not gonna be our last score of the game no. by far for sure. 
to get these first ones on there. I mean, what I've noticed, once we start dancing, it, it goes down. That is true. That, it goes that down. Is that is exactly what happened last week. Once the guys start busting loose, yep. and that, then it comes. All, all the nerves are gone, and now it's, that was just play football. Everybody, everybody down on that field knows how to play football. And actually, here we go. The head official finally comes back out on the field after being in the replay booth. We're going to find out what the call is here just now. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Mm -hmm. Touchdown. That's two for two. Mm -hmm. I'm, I mean, come on. What's That's happening That's two for right two. Now? So we are kings officially. Yes, I think you may be right. That's our kinglyhood right there, brother. I don't want to argue with you because you're always right. Well, I don't want to argue with you because you're always right. <laughs> two kings are always right. I mean, come on, man. So here we go, Spartans lined up for the extra point. Crow steps back, he lines it off. He's loosening those legs, he's looking up at those goal posts. He shakes his shoulders, he is ready. The ball is snapped, it's placed, the kick is up. Got it. And it is good. The kick go. is good. There you As go, the Crow. Spartans take seven points and put them on the board. So the Spartans finally get some scoring going. It's Spartan 7, River King 8. We're going to take a quick 45, 30 second break, and we'll be right back after this on your home for Colorado Spartans Pirate Radio 93.5. And welcome back to the action here, live from Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado. High atop the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. I told you, baby, high atop the field. Well, we're Always. bringing it back, huh? <laughs> and your Colorado Spartans have finally got some points on the board. Six minutes and 15 seconds left in the first half. It's River Kings eight, Spartans seven. As the Spartans get ready to kick the ball off, Mr. Darian Crow is in the end zone. He's got his men lined up. We got a man deep for the River Kings. And the ball is away. And it is a booming kick. It is off the top, the top scoreboard. What is that? It's got a little dust kicked up. What is that? We haven't watched it in a minute. I think. <laughs> <laughs> a little dust, a little bit of dust kicking off the apparatus at midfield. <laughs> hey, good high kick though. Good high kick. Yep. And because of that, the ball is going to be spotted on the 20 yard line for the River Kings. So we need to need to keep them kicks low. I think uh, Mr. Crow is going for that two point. Oh, that, that two point. That deuce. The deuce, looking for the deuce. Uh, as we said in uh, pregame, if you're not familiar with the National Arena League game, on your kickoffs, you can still score points. If Mr. Crow or any other kicker, for that matter, in the arena, National Arena League kicks it through the uprights on the kickoff, two points. Two points for us. That yeah, is right. I don't blame him for going for it. I go for it every time. There's not a time I wouldn't go for that. <laughs> right? Crow goes for it leg. every time. He yeah. obviously has the leg for it. We've seen him warming up, yep. so we know he can make it. The accuracy really needs to be there. And if he does miss it, then it bounces off those nets, and then you've got that rebound net. Yeah. And that's another way that you can score a point, because if that ball bounces off the rebound net, falls into the end zone, and the receiver does not get out of the end zone in time, and we tackle him in the end zone, and that is also one point. It's one point and for what us. is that? That is the rogue? The rogue the or rouge. The rouge. The rouge. <laughs> Silky dropping the, the French down for all you know, of us. First of all, my name, Devante, is French. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> or at least I've been told. I don't know if it is or not, but. The, the accent on the E. Exa you know it. So the River Kings come up to the line. They've got two men way back. Off, split off to the right. They go in motion. The ball is snapped. He has two men to the right. And the quarterback Let's go, Sam. Sucks. Let's go, Sam. <laughs> That's it. He got, a, he got off that edge quick, man. Sam, Sam Hammond. Hammond. University of Nevada product. Sam Hammond. That might be familiar to some of you CSU fans out there. If you're listening, he was patrolling this, those lines for Nevada for several mm -hmm. years. We've Luckily, he's, he's come across to this side. Now he's on the Colorado team. Sam Hammond looking big with the sack. I'm going to be honest with you. Sam and I kind of look alike. <laughs> I don't know if you've seen him. And the Spartans on that sack, a two-yard loss. So there's man split left, man split right for the, Rap the Cedar Rapids River Kings. He sends him in motion. It's a crossing pattern. It's a handoff. Come on, Sam. We got him picked up. There it in is again, the back. baby. 
Let's go, Sam. <laughs> Tackle for loss, baby. Let's hit it. And the record sounds like it's skipping because that is another backfield tackle for Mr. Hammond. <laughs> Hammond. <laughs> That's awful. Yes, That's look awful. at the pursuit by him. Showing those wheels, showing that motor that brought him to the Spartans. Yeah, they tried to do that little handoff. He tackled him in the backfield. Oh man, quick. It's after a, a one yard loss. So we're looking at third and 13, 4.45 left to go in the first half. Spartans down eight to seven early, two men one man left, one man right for the River Kings. He sends his men in motion. The ball is snapped. He looks right. He looks up. He throws a pass over the middle. He's got a receiver there. Wow. Good with the catch. Wow. That was the first time he completed a pass. That is a catch for his running back, Tremont Bright. Wow. After a short game. I'm actually in shock that he completed one. So that's going to bring up fourth down for the River Kings, looking for that defense to step up big for the Spartans. They usually show up in these situations. We're learning early yep. on that the Spartans defense is definitely a formidable opponent, something to be reckoned with. They, they're, they're no surrender. They're no retreat. They, love, they are Spartan. They love these moments right here. So it looks like the River Kings are going to have two men out to the right, empty backfield other than that. Men, men in motion. The ball is snapped. He sees the man open in the middle. The ball is knocked go. down. The pass is knocked down. Looks like Javarius Thompson got his hand on that. And look at Coach Brooks. He's yeah. psyched. He's excited. Guys are jumping around. That's what we're looking for. We just talked about that defense. Yep. Brooks has always got the – man, I'm telling you, this defense right here, they, they step up in the moments like this, man. This is what they do. This is what they do. They are hungry. They want that ball back. They want to give that ball back to their offense. They are ready to step up and provide that for them. And there we go. So the Spartans are going to take over on offense after that fourth down stop, ball tipped. So it's going to be first and 10 for the Spartans at their own, rather the River Kings 23 yard line. So we've got it on this side of the field. 3.43 left to play. Whitaker senses two men split in motion. He looks hard left. He's got a man open there on the left. There we go. And he's Come on, Deontay. And there's a couple more flags on the field. Deontay <laughs> still fighting for yards. Deontay Rarick, number four, got the nice catch. There He's we go, fighting Deontay. for yards. And, but like I said, we have flags all over the place on the field. Everybody's pointing at everybody. <laughs> it's that Spider-Man meme. It looks like Mr. Uh, Rodriguez there is, uh, he's got, Lucas has his <laughs> hand over the official, just trying to help him with the call in case he didn't know what was going on there. So we're still waiting from the official to give us an indication. On the play, illegal defense, number 26 on the defense. Blindside block mm. on the offense, number 16. Those plays will offset, replay first down. And there it is. That's why we saw a lot of laundry, as we said before, offsetting penalties on both teams. So they're gonna replay that down. A, which we're fine with. Yeah, I mean, Deontay was showing that fight right there. Yes, he was. He was struggling to get out of that tackle, but he was fighting for every yard. Respect. First and 10, still from the 24-yard line for the Spartans. The two receivers in the back switch places. Whitaker's ready. He sends his men in motion. The ball snapped. It's high snap, but he's got it. He's got a pass open to the right. Oh! That was a hit. Hey, but what a catch. But what a catch right there. Mr. Khalil Hayes with the catch. Hey, what did what did stay focused there, Mr. Hayes? He, and he took the, they call that the bucket and the bruise in basketball. He definitely got hammered. Spartans sending two men in motion. Whitaker's got a pass. He's got a man oh. over the oh. That's okay. That's Came just up a little mis, short. Miscommunication right there. He thought that he was going to curl in. Uh, I, I assume that Stephen Newbold had an option route on that. Yeah, I would say that's probably what happened there. Oh, we got that. So a little bit more conversation. But I mean, he was open though. The option route, I mean, he had it wide open. Basically a post is what he did right there. And he got he got lit up, but he held on to the ball hard. He definitely oh, took a lick on that one. Khalil, man, I love it. So third and three, 215 left to play. Whitaker's motioning his around. He's got Kadarius Campbell next to him. He's got Hayes to his right. He's got There it is. Deontay Rarick out yep. there. Oh! There you go, baby! 
And he's got Newbold over at the sideline for a complete pass on the play. What a toss hey. and catch. Back shoulder, he hit a Tony toe tap on him too. <laughs> I know there's not really out of bounds. You gotta put the ball over the, the, the barrier there, but uh, it's still Tony toe tap. He, he put it right where only the receiver could catch the ball. That's exactly what you're looking for. You talked about that back shoulder yep. in the end zone. Beautiful spiral pass by Whitaker on the play. On the money. On the money. So we're looking at first and goal from the four yard line. The, plot, the clock runs with a minute and a half left to go here. Spartans still down eight to seven. Looking hungry, looking to take the lead here though. Whitaker, he's calling out a play. He switches Campbell over to his right side. He sends his men in motion. The ball snapped. And it's over to Campbell. The bully. He takes the ball to the right. The he's bully. And he's Come on in. now. Come on now. Tell him to sit down. Don't even try to attack with you. Touchdown. Kadarius Campbell with the run. A four yard touchdown run by Campbell on the play. And the Spartans take the lead. There we go. What did I say? They start dancing. We start having a good time. It's a wrap. And maybe the floodgates have been released. They we'll see what happens have here. Been opened. The Spartans with that score take the lead 13 to 8. Kadarius the bully. I mean, great blocking, great blocking, great run. I mean, he just runs so, like, he's angry, man. That's what you're looking for there. He's angry. <laughs> Run angry. And Darian Crow, number 18, comes out to kick the extra point. We're going to go with those extra points. All two-point conversions last week. Mr. Crow is going to get some exercise today. Product out of Texas College. We're happy to have him on the squad. He lines up. He looks up. He's ready. He signals. Set that ball down for me. It's down. The kick is up. It's off. Oh, and it's Get a rebound. It. Get on it. And there was our first rebound net action. Wow. wow. So the kick came up wide left. The ball kicked off the rebound mat back into the field of play. And oh, with man. a minute 10 left in the first half, the Colorado Spartans have taken the lead against the visiting River Cedar. Rapids, Rapid River Kings. River that is a tongue-tying, twisting <laughs> thing. I'll tell you what. <laughs> I'm going to call them the River I'm glad Rapids. we don't have to do this again for them. <laughs> this is a one and only for the River Kings. But with that, like I said, minute 10 left in the first half. Spartans 13, River Kings 8. So we start to, like we said, they start to loosen up. They got mm -hmm. those pregame jitters, the little yips, the little fumbles, all that sort of thing. Yep. Totally um, gone on that last drive. Absolutely. I don't know what the definition of a yip is, but absolutely <laughs> correct, man. They had a lot of yippies going on, um, but we are no more yippies anymore. So uh, now now let's just play football like I mentioned, man. Let's just play football, let loose. You know, this, doesn't, this isn't going to hurt our record for the playoffs, but it's going towards our record, and we want to win every game no matter what it is. That is exactly right. Kind of a... We're a non-conference opponent, which yeah. is great. So really uh, grateful for the Cedar Rapids River Kings for stepping up and taking this game against the Spartans, giving us somebody else to beat up on. Mm -hmm. And the fact that they're from a different league too, right? I like, I like the crossing, right? Mm -hmm. It looks good for arena football all around. I would have to agree. Show the diversity, show the skill. Yep. But we still want to show that the National Arena League is the preeminent arena league in football. We just want to show that the Spartans are the team of all arena football. And that's that's what they're showing it now, man. I mean, yeah, we start off slow. It's still very early in the season. Yep. Well, and like we talked about last week uh, in the NOCO Nightmare game, Spartans got off a little bit slow. It was a close game. I believe it was 16-12 early on. Mm -hmm. And uh, after we calmed down a little bit, we got some scores, came out in the second half, energized, ready to attack. There's no stopping us. I mean, we had Five interceptions, five interceptions. That's unheard of, you know? And really, we're, I won't say we're completely beating ourselves, but we've defeated we've defeat ourselves on our plays. You know, there was the one touch, the one interception that they turned into points. Yep. But other than that, we've been stopping them. Oh, yeah. I mean, they've completed one pass. Everything else has been a run, so. And here we go. As we get ready to start play once more, the Spartans getting ready to kick off. Darian Crow deep in the end zone. He comes out, the ball is kicked away, and another and another one off another. the facade over the field here. He's going for two again. He is. He's I, trying to make up for that missed extra absolutely. point. <laughs> absolutely. I mean, if he puts enough velocity on that kick low, it's a very high possibility he can hit it. And 
Same song, different verse. <laughs> yeah. They're going to take the ball over at the 20-yard line with the penalty there on the kickoff. So fortunately, the ball, if the ball goes out of bounds before it gets the end zone, ball taken at the 20-yard line. And the crowd is getting into it. Look at the Spartans over there getting the crowd hyped. Yeah, we got Ladarius Skelton. He's injured, unfortunately. We're sad that you did not get to see Mr. Skelton. He is going to be special. We talk about our two-headed monster with Jason Whitaker and Ladarius Skelton. You saw him last or a couple weeks ago against yep. NoCo. Saw what he saw what he can do. How versatile he is. He is our multifaceted feature quarterback. So he's out. He's, I think Coach said he's going to be out for about three or four weeks, mm -hmm. unfortunately. So. Uh, not going to get a chance to see him for a little while. Jason Whitaker's definitely going to get a lot of playing time, a lot of experience, so we're going to really get to see what he settles down in. And so we've got one minute left in the first half as your Spartans are up 13-8 to eight against the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. I think the uh, River Rapids are, uh, are definitely going to try to throw the ball here, and I think they know that they, that they can't. So be, be aware of some read options right here and just taking it off. I would send everybody, though. I don't care. I'm sending them. So we'll see. They take over on their 20-yard line. First and 10, one minute left to play. He's got two men out left. He sends his men in motion. The ball is away. He looks right. And he's got a deep pass over is. into the end zone Good. and incomplete. Yes, sir. Vernon yeah. Reed was trying to find Shiloh Flanagan there in the end zone, overthrew his receiver. As we talked about earlier, the accuracy, a little bit of a concern a for the River Kings quarterback. Definitely showing those legs a little bit more. So, Looks But like you were right, going for it all there before first half. I mean, they have to, right? They have to try to get some momentum. Looks like Amari Sia was there on the defensive stop. River Kings break huddle. 55 seconds left in the first half. He's got two men left. He's got... Tremont Bright next to him on the right side. He sends a man out right. Ball snapped, and it's a handoff for Bright. Nice, baby. So they pick up about two-ish, three yards there on the first run there for Bright. Looks like Quentin Peoples right there with that stop. Quentin Peoples got long arms, man. <laughs> like it's going to be hard to get around him. So As the clock winds, there's 33 seconds left in the first half, 25 seconds on the play clock for the River Kings. 13-8 Spartans here. They're going to try to punch it in maybe for half. We'll see what happens or if they're going to play conservative again. He's got all four men lined up on the left side of the quarterback. He sends two men in motion. The ball snapped. He looks. Oh, and he floats one up oh, in there. He's got oh, a receiver wide open on the left. Oh, and, there's a flag, though. And on the score, they have a touchdown for the River Kings. There is a flag on the play. Looks like maybe it's going to end up being on the Spartans. Looks like. Maybe a late hit on the quarterback. We haven't received the call yet. Here we go. Rolling on the field is a touchdown. Personal foul, roughing the passer. Defense, that penalty is declined. Touchdown. Man. So, had the man wide open on the left, unfortunately. And it was a beautiful throw. It was right to him. A blown coverage, perhaps. I'm talking all that trash. Number nine, Robert Majors. With the major catch for the <laughs> touchdown, no doubt. That is exactly what they were looking for before half. Man. Unfortunately, the River Kings take a 14 to 13 lead with 12 seconds left in the first half, sneaking that score in there, unfortunately, after the Spartans had just taken the lead on the other end. And see, and that's what happens. Penalties are costly. That kickoff yep. hits the apparatus. They yep. get the ball on the 20 yard line. It's a short pass to the end zone after that. Yep, I'm just, just small mistakes. These are all things that can be taken care of in practice, though. So I'm not concerned. I mean, this can be taken care of in the second half. Like you go back in the locker room, you start talking to your men. This. The, I think the official was saying that the uh, roughing the passer will be assessed at the kickoff. So looks like the River Kings are, are going to go for two. They got the big man, number 91, Enoch, Enoch Tucker, back in there again in the backfield. So look for them to hand it to the rumbling, stumbling, bumbling lineman. We'll see what happens. He sends a man in motion. Oh, and it's a fake to him. And we tackle him get there, short. baby. So they used. Amari Sia right there, baby, yeah. on the tackle. Used Tucker as a little bit of misdirection. They went the other direction. Spartans not fooled by it. They sniffed it out. Tackled him short. So the, ball, the score is going to stay. 14 to 13 here with 12 seconds left in the first half. 
Spartans down one here as we go into the locker room. Can only imagine that's going to make them hungry. Oh, this score doesn't bother me at all. It's essentially zero to zero at this point, and that's what you that's how you look at the second half as anyway. Going into it, no matter how many points you have against the team, it doesn't matter if you're up seventy to twelve. To me, it's always zero to zero, and we're always trying to put more on the board. I like the way I like that thinking, definitely from Silky. <laughs> That's a silky way of thinking. Thank you. <laughs> Coach Brooks and Coach Shaw both out there talking to his guys. They break their huddle for the kickoff. Let's see what happens here. we got 12 seconds left in the first half. Look how fast they scored. We can turn around and do the same exact thing. We've got Steve Newbold, one of the junior men's there, as you'd like to say, <laughs> yeah. sitting back there at about the five-yard line. He could take it all the way. Oh. We know about his talents and his skills. So Absolutely. We get a nice return here, get us something reasonable. A nice little pass from Whitaker. We do score just as fast. Yep. So the River Kings line up, and the kick is away. And he has to back up. It's off the back of the end zone. Let's go, baby. Steve has it. He comes out to the Did left. He takes one. That new boat shake. He Ooh. says another one. Come on, oh, Steve. He breaks the tackle. Come on, Steve. He's at the, four. He's at the 20. Oh, he is nipped at the 25-yard line at midfield. Once again, we've got a flag on the play back oh. around the 12-yard line. Beautiful return by Newell. Boy, he has got some moves, but I'm afraid that that may be coming back. Could be like a block in the back. That's usually what you're looking for on the play like that. Could be mistaken here. The officiating crew is trying to work it out. We're about to get the call on the play, and here we go. He's going to get a little, clear things up a little bit for us. Third, holding on the return team, half the distance to the goal. We will also bank the half the distance to the goal. First down, Colorado. So you heard that call. It's going to back the Spartans way back. Small mistakes. Small mistakes. They add up. Let me give a shout-out to Newbold, though. I think he might want to talk to uh, some salt and pepper shakers out there and get a, a shaker named after him. <laughs> so the Spartans will take over. Four seconds left in the half at about their own two yard line. I am, are they gonna, we'll see what they end up doing here. You're so close. You don't take a chance on the safety. Uh, Just gotta I, get the ball out of the end zone, quarter, Whitaker. Quarterback sneak, get a couple yards ahead. Sends his men in motion, the ball's loose. He throws it out to the okay. right. Do it. And a little over to the middle. He breaks free. He come breaks on, come free. on. That's fine, that's a good way to end the half. Steve Newbold, oh, no running. he laterals the ball. Come on, Kadarius. Kadarius breaks the tackle. <laughs> come on, Kadarius. Still fighting. They finally whistled him down. <laughs> they looked like he was down. The ball came out. Campbell had it. He ran it another few yards. A lot of excitement there at the end of the first half. So, with 30 minutes of play out of the way, the Cedar Rapids River Kings have a 14 to 13 lead over the Colorado Spartans. We're gonna go to take a commercial break here at halftime. You're listening to your home of the Colorado Spartans only on Pirate Radio 93.5 FM. Twenty minutes.
and welcome back to the action here live from Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado. High atop the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. I am your host, Jacob Govro. Joining me in the booth is my co-host, my compadre, my partner, Devante Branch, Silky Smooth. Silky Smooth, baby. There it is. Don't forget that. Come on now. We're all going to refine our game as we move <laughs> along, right? You going to do the same thing? Oh, absolutely, absolutely. You know, I like what we're seeing out here. You know, I, there are small things that are going on, but I think these are all going to be ironed out by the second half, right? Last, last time we played, we didn't have a kicker, you know, and he's made a couple of small mistakes, but it's because he hasn't been able to kick in the setting yet, right? So once that, once his nerves about being on the field wear down, that you take away those two, put him back on the 20 there, we would have been back on maybe the 10 if he would have got the kickoff, right? We've been sitting completely different right now. Yeah, it's little things, right? Mm -hmm. and, we, and, and, and every sport, they talk about that. It's the little minor fixes, the adjustments, you know, the, the simple mistakes. Mm -hmm. And I believe that's probably what Coach Shaw is emphasizing there in the locker room. They're right there. You know, this game could be completely different. Like you said, a couple different plays here and there. And that's what we're looking for in the second half. And that's what we expect. Oh, absolutely. I mean, just from the one game that we've seen, this is a second half team, right? It, once we see that everybody is starting to have fun and start dancing around, the momentum shifts a little bit. Once the crowd starts getting into it too, when it, when we see everybody, it's a completely different game. I mean, our defense is, to me, I'm not that concerned with our defense at all. We made one miscommunication on that last touchdown there, and I think we're fine. Steven Newbold going crazy. Whitaker, Mr. Jay Witt, the taker. <laughs> I mean, our, we're fine. Small mistakes. Let's counter on their mistakes because they have seven penalties right now. Yeah, and definitely racking those up. Yeah, the flags have been flying left and right out there. Honestly, the mm -hmm. both teams, it's kind of really been starting to pick up. Penalties are costly. We always talk about that. We want to look. Those are those little, those little adjustments, those little mistakes that we're going to, they're definitely going to fix. And if you're just now joining us, you're listening to Colorado Spartans football on your home, Pirate Radio 93.5. The... Uh, visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings with a very small le halftime lead mm -hmm. over the Cairo Spartans, 14 to 13. And uh, as we get ready for the second half, we're still looking at about 13 minutes left before halftime. You know, I I think that this team is about to just really turn it up. What I'm gonna start doing, honestly, what we started doing is started small, quick passes, right? At first we were trying to go big, which I completely understand. Test them, right? Absolutely. Test them early. But now we're seeing that the nice little quick out routes, the little hitches, little curls, little dig routes, little sitting curls, all these are actually working. That's when we started moving the ball. And that's exactly what I do coming out of here. I don't do anything else. I give Kadarius the ball a couple times, Mr. Bully. Let's fly home with this. Let's fly home with this. Exactly right, utilize that. Real quick, we want to thank a few of our sponsors. Dr. Danny L. Natan, Chiropractic LLC. Revitalize your workplace, on-site manual therapy with Dr. Danny L. Natan. Enhancing employee well-being one touch at a time. Serving all of Northern Colorado. Phone number 970-430-5741. Homes for NoCo Real Estate. Score on your home goals with Homes for NoCo Real Estate. Northern Colorado's home team. From kickoff to victory, we can help you to your dream home. Whether you're in the market to buy, sell, or invest, let us help you with a winning game plan tailored just for you. Homesfornoco.com. Pinocchio's Incredible Italian, scratch Italian cooking just like Noni used to make. Pinocchio's Incredible Italian, located at 905 16th Street in Greeley. Reservations at 303-827-8945. Website, eat at Pinocchio's.com. Pinocchio's Prime, serving up handcrafted prime rib dishes. It's prime time for prime rib. Located at 804 8th Street, downtown Greeley. Reservations are recommended 303-827-8945. And speaking of prime, it is prime time, as you said before. Uh, as the clock clicks down here, about 11 minutes left in the first half. The Spartans looking to take that lead whenever they come back out of the, uh, the halftime. And they'll have that ball, so they'll have that opportunity to just turn around and jump right back on top of the River Kings. Yeah. Uh, you know, I again, second half team, this momentum, they think the Cedar uh, what is it, Cedar Rapid River Kings think that they're going to have the momentum, and they're going to be sadly mistaken. You know, I, 
Our kicker is down there getting some kicks in right now, as he should. Let's get used to this environment. Let's get used to anything that's going on in here, anything that may actually affect you. Just simple kicks, right? I think maybe he was trying to go for that deuce earlier, yeah. which is why he was kicking as the hard as Megatron. he did. Yep. <laughs> like Megatron. <laughs> Le maybe more like Legatron. Legatron there out it here. is. Legatron out there. We are getting nicknames for everybody. <laughs> Everyone's getting nicknames. We know out Crow's here. got a leg. He's he tried to show it off there a couple of times. Might need to bring it back down from space just a little bit. Yeah. You know, but help that team out. Get that. Get the team. Get this River Kings pin deep. Yeah. Absolutely. And nobody's putting any blame on him for what the score is. That's not at all what we're saying. I just think that there's so many nerfs because he didn't get to kick last time. <laughs> right? But, I mean, Kadarius Campbell's making plays like no other right now. You know, Steven Newbold, Mr. Mr. Shake and Bake. Okay. We get a cut. We let him loose. This is a whole nother game. You know, with that return that he had, I mean. Yeah, once again, it was the penalties, the little yep. things. You know, just little things here and there. And, and not to hark on it too much, but that's – that's always the case, you know, it's just minor adjustments. I won't say we play bad, definitely not that, but just not our game yet. Mm -hmm. And once they start playing their game, as Coach said, it's good. It's going to be game over. Oh, absolutely. I mean, you're saying not to hark on it, but, like, honestly, that's really the only difference. I mean, that's the only, minus the one interception, it's really the only reason that we're down, right? Miss, slight miscommunications on offense and defense. So, I... I think what I'm expecting to see here, defense plays the exact same way that they've been playing. Maybe some minor, minor adjustments because you don't fix what ain't broken, right? And this isn't really broken. This yeah, you know, the machine. The, the, we talked about that quarterback, Verlin Reed, for the River Kings, about having he's, – he's kind of a, a multi-purpose quarterback, kind of like Skelton has on our end. Mm -hmm. Hasn't been able to really get a whole lot going. He did have the one pass to the wide-open receiver that you probably could have thrown a touchdown pass on. <laughs> Whoa. Okay, <laughs> I can throw. Okay, I got accuracy, baby. Okay, All maybe right. I could have caught it then. Maybe I could have caught yourself. it. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yes, exactly. So, um, so – We've really kind of kept him under wraps, definitely keeping the running game for them uh, under control. So, yeah, just minor, just minor adjustment. Yeah. I, I don't think that they're going to come out the rapids. I don't think they're going to come out throwing the ball. I think they're going to continuously run the ball. They're going to run these read options. They're going to run quarterback sneaks, right? The nice little fakery uh, offset plays they got going on here with the option runs. That's what they're going to stick to. Then they're going to try to bomb us down the field. Little do they know, they don't have enough time to run any trickery plays, though. Our defense, you know, Quentin Peoples is in there, Sam Hammond, Jeff Luke, they're all in there in a matter of seconds. They don't have the time to actually run any trickery plays. So I, I almost guarantee that's what they're going to come out and try to do. But So speaking of having enough time, we're, we've got about enough time. We're going to do one more break here before halftime starts back up. We've got about 7.20 left before the half, as we said, from Blue Arena. Cedar Rapids River Kings 14, Spartans 13 on your home for Spartan football on Pirate Radio 93.5. We'll be right back. Are you doing break now? Okay, there's about six and a half minutes left before the half. So we'll do this break, we'll come back really quick and then go back and do another break. Okay, cool. As soon as you kick it back to us, we'll talk for a second and throw it right back.
and welcome back. Broadcasting live from Blue Arena here in Loveland, Colorado, high atop the field from the Ron's Bonds press box here in Blue Arena. And we've got a score of Cedar Rapids River Kings 14, Colorado Spartans 13. There's about two and a half minutes left before the second half is getting ready to start, D. And we got, we, we're looking to see more. Yeah, we're definitely looking to see more. I don't think, I think the, the long ball game is done for, for us tonight. Uh, I do think that we will be taking our chances, but that's once we uh, do nice little quick passes, set them up, set up the run, and then we throw that thing down there, right? I mean, we just got to have so many athletes. It's, I mean, Whitaker's accuracy, we talk about it, right? But that man can, that might, he can hit a dime from Saturn, you know? Yeah, I hear that. <laughs> Speaking of hearing that, we are going to actually take one quick break before the half. We've got about two minutes left before the half, and we'll be back on Pirate Radio, your home for the Cotero Spartans, 93.5 FM. And we welcome you back to Blue Arena for Colorado Spartans football. There's about five seconds left before the half is getting ready to start. So the teams are finally pulling off. Offense getting out, defense coming out, ready for that kickoff. Cedar Rapids River Kings have a very slim 14 to 13 lead here as we get ready to start the second half. D silky, silky. <laughs> That's gonna roll off my tongue so silky. smoothly soon. Yeah, well, it is silky smooth, so it should be rolling off pretty good. Uh, yeah, I I don't think that this, this lead is gonna hold up much longer. I think this team is about to, we're about to get that groove back. It's a groove thing, right? That's what's about to happen right here. Everybody's about to start dancing. Everybody's about to start having a good time. The energy in here is about to get really high. And I think, I think it's gonna be a wrap for the the uh, Cedar Rapid River Otters. Um. <laughs> just, just hatred. Look at the no, vitriol. No, no, no. I don't hate. They're just the competitors right now. There you so go. There's some, you know, it's competitive fire dislike. Yes, you are going to rep your team. I'm, I understand that. I'm absolutely repping my team. Are you kidding me? And speaking of repping, we want to rep a few people. Top-notch plumbing, heating, and air on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eaton, and Kersey. On the go, breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado's Stonehenge and rock-solid inspiration. FitRx is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. And here we go. The ball is away. Oh, and it's a squibber. It's on the ground. Let's get it. They didn't want to kick it deep. They don't want to kick it deep to Troy. There it is. Hey, we got great field position now. Great field position now. And number seven, Troy Evans with the catch on the kickoff. The junior mints are doing it. Yes, the, the other half mints. of the junior mints. So the Spartans are going to start off with excellent field position as they're already in River Kings 
territory. I'm not sure what they were thinking about on that squibber, but we'll take it. Thank you very much. Yeah, that wasn't very strategic. They didn't really catch us off guard there. No, and this is exactly what we needed, what we're talking oh, yeah. about. We needed a little bit of mistake. We are going to take over first and 10 at the 21-yard line mm -hmm. for the Spartans as we start the third quarter here. Whitaker sends his men, two men out of his right in motion. He looks right. He throws right. He's got him in. Oh, oh my goodness gracious. And the catch is good. He caught it, though. <laughs> he caught it, though. Come on, Steve. Who what? would know that? That was Troy. What an incredible catch. Was that my boy, Junior? On the sideline. He hit one of them, too. Look at this. Yeah, Whitaker with a high throw. Oh, my goodness. Oh, and he Troy Evans hauls it in. He goes over the sideline, over the wall. He climbs up on the wall, throws his hands in the air, just so y'all know <laughs> who caught that ball. What a catch on the hey, sideline. I tell you, that, that buddy got drop kicked back there. I know he knows he caught that ball. Yeah, and we talked about that. You said you were a part of the game when you were sitting around this stand, you're looking around the, this field. Yep, you're in the danger zone. You better be ready. <laughs> so on that, we are second and one. Spartans with the ball. Newbold crosses, Wigger looks, he's got the quarterback right, right, sneak. He's headed towards, he's at the five, Reach he's at the him. three. He does the spin move. There we go. And Whitaker gets pushed up out of the box. Oh no. oh no, they don't like that. Rodriguez doesn't like that at all. Oh, oh come on now. now. I think that might, that's gonna end up, I believe being on the River Kings with a little bit of unnecessary roughness. Coach Shaw's over there getting in on the action, trying to plead his case for his guys. So yeah, it looks like a quarterback sneak for Whitaker, picked up the first down. And then uh, as he went up against the wall, got a little extracurricular activity going on there with a little pushing and shoving. Uh, his offensive line looking to protect the quarterback. They did not like that very much. Came in to protect him. Lucas Rodriguez, we know he's going to be an enforcer. Mr. Oh, yeah. Big 6'5", 370, throwing his weight around. He's not messing around. That's his quarterback, and he will oh. not let you push him around. He told me back in Miami where he's from that he used to do some bouncing. So he knows, he knows how to protect out here. And that's why we have him down there on that line. He is a big protector. One of many that uh, Jay Witt has patrolling the line of scrimmage for him, trying to keep him safe. I do think it was a little unnecessary, a little shove out there. I think it was a little bit of anger. Yeah, there was definitely there. something. Hopefully there's, I believe it looked like Rodriguez got a hand thrown up in his face. So mm -hmm. I know a hand to the face sometimes means an automatic ejection. So we're going to see the referees and officials are still kind of trying to sort out what's going on. Coach Shaw steps up once again to let the guys know what he thinks happened on the play. I'd say he's probably right. Yeah, let's see what's Dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Offense number 70. Come on now. Ooh. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike. Unsportsmanlike on the defense. Unclear on the number. Those <laughs> plays will offset, replay, first down. Okay. And there it is. So they're offset. A little bit of pushy shovey. Yeah. And we we remember what happened against the Nightmare. Remember in the second half, we came out in the second half. Yep. Emotions got high. Tensions were flaring. A little push and shoving. We had offsetting penalties. Mm -hmm. And then what happened after that, baby? Well, we took off. 70-12. 70-12. There's no more to talk about. It, what, can we do 70-14? to 14? I think it's still possible. I don't see why not. We'll see what happens. As the Spartans break huddle, they come up to the three-yard line, first and goal from the three. Whitaker has all men lined up to his left. They go in motion. Oh, he fakes there the handoff to Campbell. Off. He's got a man in the oh. oh, what a solid defensive play. Ah, and Troy Evans is upset. He was sitting there wide open. He was camped out. Whitaker was surveying the field, trying to find his open man. And once he finally saw Mr. Evans, mm. the window had closed up. Hey, the good thing is, is that that's a first down play. We can afford that. Exactly. That was good recovery on defense, though, to be fair. <laughs> that is a, an astute observation. We still have three downs to go. So second goal from the three. Whitaker has his men split. Newbold crosses over. He's got a man in the end zone. Oh! Oh! Big man Rodriguez was there. Lucas Rodriguez, the lineman, reported eligible, and he had it bounce off his chest oh. protector, unfortunately. He, uh, Whitaker is fitting through some tight spots right yeah, now. Yeah, that ball had some stank on it. Oh, it had, oh, it was smelling. I tell you that it was smelling. But I mean, two nice little trickery type of plays right here. Little play action on both. Oh yeah, and that's a tough play there. He's got two defenders running in front of him. He's not always a receiver. Solid effort by Rodriguez. Unfortunately, ball pounces off. He lines back up on his traditional side there on the right end. Whitaker has Campbell lined up next to him. Two men in motion. That's Evans and Newbold. 
Whitaker sneaks it. Oh, no, no way! Oh. No way, baby! He fakes it into the end zone. He <laughs> flips it up in the air over to D. Washington. D. Wash is there for the touchdown. Come home now. You know what that looked like right there? That looked like some Brett Farbery. Yeah, that was, I don't know, we'll talk about maybe Patrick Mahomes if we want to talk. I know these Broncos fans here. I don't want to bring up oh. bad stuff too much. So, but that was definitely some trickery as the Spartans take the lead. I mean, way to be, way to be aware, though. I really thought he was going to take off and run with it. Oop. We got a review. Looks like they were reviewing whether or not the quarterback was beyond the line of scrimmage. I have to admit, Silky, I was a little bit nervous that possibly he did cross that line of scrimmage. Yeah. But, you know, I'm not going to say that. No, absolutely not. I mean, a beautiful play is a beautiful play. We've been right all game long. I don't want those referees to know what happened for real on this. Oh, well, I think we're right. I think it was a touchdown. I'm calling it. My kingliness is calling it. Yeah, on the replay there, tough to see. It didn't see exactly. The boots. So as they sit up there in the replay booth trying to figure out exactly what was going on, they're still discussing it. Right now it's 14-13 River King. Looking for a 19-14 score possibly whenever they come out of that. It was a little close there, Silky. Did you happen to catch what was going on? I mean, it definitely it definitely was a little close. I, I think he let go of the ball right before he stepped over the line of scrimmage. Uh, so I'm still calling this a touchdown. I'm still calling this a touchdown. I think everything was still behind before, right before he stepped over. So let's go. Four, it's a touchdown. Touchdown. I'm calling it now. Yo, I don't touchdown. even know why they're arguing with this. This is going to be three out of three. Even if they, even if they say it's the opposite, they're wrong. They're, <laughs> they're wrong. Just listen to us. <laughs> we know what we're talking about. I know. I'm an expert. Okay. Are you <laughs> kidding me? Get out of here. Well, we've got this bird's eye view high above the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. So how can you argue with us? Once again, thanking Ron's Bonds for being our sponsor of the press box. Ron's Bonds, I'll get you out. 970-351-6734, ronsbondsco.com. It's gonna be a touchdown. Still arguing about it. Yeah. Coach Clark for the River Kings, he's out there on the field also, talking with his defense, trying to keep those guys locked in. We'll see what happens. And the officials finally come out of the, pre uh, the re replay booth. They're going to let us know what's going on. After review, the ruling of the field is confirmed. The quarterback was behind the line of scrimmage. Touchdown. And there it is. That's three for three, baby. Uh, I don't know what else to say. I don't know what else to say, but. Uh, put it up in the air. I mean, just just put me in, a, in some stripes right now. <laughs> Make me a zebra, if you will. Make you a zebra? We need to get you down there. I, no, I think my view is better suited up yeah, here. Yeah, I would miss I'll you. I'll be honest with I you. I would miss you. I wouldn't want you leaving. Well, I, I don't want to make everybody else look bad. The, you know, I am the official ref <laughs> that they don't know about. <laughs> so after the replay and the call was confirmed, it is a touchdown for D. Wash from Jason Whitaker. It looks like the Spartans are going to go for two here as well. Try to get that touchdown lead. Oh, it's a high snap. And we have more laundry on the field. Looks like we got a we jump got an, from there. We got an illegal most false start. Replay, first down. False start on Lucas Rodriguez there. Uh, Lucas getting a little getting a little antsy. He, he was ready to block for his man. Oh, he's always coming in with the high energy, though. I never follow a man that's coming in with high energy like that. So with 10.45 left in the third quarter, the Spartans line up for a two-point conversion. They're back out at the nine-yard line after that penalty. Whitaker sends his men in motion. He's got the snap. He sees the take man off, right. Take off, baby. Take off. off. No, he's looking. He's got a man in. Oh. oh. And it's intercepted Get on in Get the on end him. zone. Get on him. We want to bring him down because that is a returnable oh. ball, as we see. He's tackled that on the play, on the return. Number 17. For the Cedar Rapids River Kings, took a solid shot there. Looks like he's going to get up, though, after shaking it off a little bit. So, unfortunately, two-point conversion fails. So, with 10.45 left in the third quarter, Spartans lead 19-14. But they did what we talked about right off the yep. bat. Yep. They came out. Nice little short passes, man. I mean, we just have the guy. I mean, that catch? Are you kidding me on the sideline there? What? Is, that's ESPN top 10. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Over the wall, Over into the, the crowd, wall, hitting people. No, that's not happening in the NFL. Okay, nobody's jumping that high, getting hit, drop kicking WWE style out here. Yes, I mean, watch I think, it. I think uh, Whitaker just—he's been successful with his accuracy as far as threading the needle. That one bit him in the butt. I understand what he was trying to do there, and he was trying to just do something. See if, see if it is working 
yeah. the entire time. You got to scramble. You got to make something happen. Yep. Unfortunately, he came up a little bit short. So the River Kings are back deep to receive the ball as Mr. Crow lines up in the end zone. Let's try and keep this one low this time. Yes. Get that, pin these guys deep maybe. That would be a really good deal. And the kick is out, and the ball is way up in the... It didn't touch anything. Uh, oh, no, it deflected. Did it? it did. <laughs> we thought it was going to go through all the Raptors. Unfortunately, it went up. It came down. It looked good, yeah. but it just kind of nicked It nicked the one. So that was better, though. His accuracy, he missed He missed the middle. Yeah, he, he missed the middle, but I, we just got to get it real nice and low. Yeah, and then see now lower. the Spartans are going to start out on defense, pin back a little bit more. The River Kings are going to take over. First and 10 from their own 20 yard line at, with the penalty on the you, kick. It's going to come out to almost midfield, not quite. You know, so small with, mistakes lead to big consequences. So let's see. Hopefully, hopefully that does not hurt us as we saw in the first half. Those little mistakes were really kind of coming back to bite on us mm -hmm. here. So River Kings, two men out left. Running back off to his left as well. Reed calls for the ball. Men in motion. He hands it off to th Bright. Bright is tackled after about a Three, four yard gain. Quentin Peoples there. Quentin Peoples with the tackle there, the stoppage on the run. Um, again, I, like I said, this is what, what this is exactly what they're going to do. Hand the ball off, read option, right? A little trickery. They're not really going to throw the ball deep at all. They just can't. No, that's exactly right. Coach said we're going to cut him down, and uh, he looks a little nervous to run out there. He knows he's going to get oh, cut. Oh, he knows he's going to get hit constantly, so he can't run. So you got to be able to show that arm a little bit. So 15 seconds left on the play clock. S receiver split out left, split out right. He sends his men in motion. One's cross, yep. handed off. Oh, and he is tackled Down, in baby. the backfield. They did the handoff to wide receiver Daniel Hugan. Tried to do a little misdirection there. Defense wasn't fooled. Oh. Coach's schemes run deep. How many times do we have to say that? We're going to keep saying it because they can't stop it. They can't get past us. Jeff Luke right there with the stop, man. Okay. University of Florida product, Jeff Luke. I mean, there it is again. What are they going to do? What do they have to do now, though? They have to try to get some tiny yards. They have to try to throw the ball They're going to have to throw it down they field. can't. And so they, they're starting to defeat themselves in their head mentally now. Well, let's hope they defeat themselves again on this play. Absolutely. Play clock winding down 10 seconds. Third and 11 for the River Kings. Two men out right. Receive, running back lineup next to him. Up. Looks like 75, Sean. Kemmerer. Yeah, Kemmerer. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> Silky. 75, five-yard penalty, replay fourth down. And they, they're going to keep backing them up. There it is. After the tackle for loss, then we've got a penalty on the offense. Mm -hmm. That's going to pull them back five more yards. We're looking at third and 16 with 8.47 left to play in the third quarter with your Spartans leading 19-14 to 14 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. As the River Kings huddle up, they're trying to figure out what they're going to do here. Oh, I mean, again, you have to throw the ball. You have to get a tiny bit of yardage here. I'm throwing a nice little five-yard dig or a five-yard out right here to just knock this down a Pick little bit. Pick up some chunks, make get, it a manageable fourth down. Give me back down. third and ten or fourth and ten. Well, we're about to see what happens. Eight seconds on the play clock, two men out right. They shift, head into the line. Quarterback's got the ball. There we go, oh, Jack. Luke in there it is, Luke. Oh, yeah, big baby. Jeff Luke. Helmet pops off. Let no. him know. Did he have a receiver in the vicinity? He thought maybe there might be some intentional grounding. There is some laundry on the field one more time. Yep. Are we going to get an intentional grounding there? Loss it down at the spot. We're going to find out. Intentional grounding. Offense number one. The ball did not cross the line of scrimmage. Lost it down. Fourth down. Yep. Spot foul. So the, the Spartans will get the ball at the spot of the sack by Big Jeff Luke with the intentional grounding. It's a loss of down. Yep. Not really much of a difference there. Still going to be fourth, fourth down for the River Kings, but they're buried deep now. Best thing for them to do, honestly, is launch that ball down and let us pick it off. Okay, it's going to be used as a punt because you are not moving from here, buddy. Yes, chuck the ball as deep as you can. Yep. And if you're the Spartans, you Listen, just let it fall. We have great, great athletes. Any one of them would love to catch the ball right now. I'm sure of it. So the River Kings break their huddle. Verlin Reed has his receiver split left, split right. He's standing in the end zone, sends the boys in motion. He's got the ball. He looks left. He looks right. He's stumbling around. He's calling his receivers. He's got a pass downfield to an open receiver. Come on up. Stopped him. Stopped him. Stopped him at the original line of scrimmage. So they did pick up some yards. 
Sounds like we've got another flag on the field. My goodness. Hopefully it's not anything that's gonna create a first down. We'll wait to hear from the official what the play is. He's but pointing in the direction of the Spartans though. So here we go. Illegal defense, number 21, not lined up at five yards. Five yard penalty, replay fourth down. So there we go, we're gonna replay that down. They picked up five more yards, which is great because they actually picked up like 10 yards. Or 15 <laughs> yards on the throw. So Either way, it was a turnover though. Yeah. Either way, it was a turnover. But th since it being fourth down, they couldn't, they could not decline the penalty or mm -hmm. else it would have been turned over on downs. Yep. So with that penalty, they pick up five yards on the play. Fourth and 21 for the River Kings. 7.40 left to go in the third quarter. Spartans leading 19 to 14 over the visiting River Kings. So they're chatting it over, trying to figure out, they're looking for that 21 yard play. Uh, same defense I would run here. You know, Sam Hammond was back pressing coverage. I would do the exact same thing. Have one man, maybe two men rush. Reed has two men left, two men right. He motions Bright to come up to the line. He sends his men in motion. The ball's loose. He steps back, he throws it over the middle. He's got a receiver got wide open. They got enough time. Oh, oh, it looks like he probably got it. Yes, it did. He gets tackled right at the marker for the first down. Our defense is saying we stopped him. And it's quite possible we'll get another review, another measurement. What do we got going on here, D Silk? What do you think? This is, this to me, yeah, he reached. That's a first down. Yeah. So that is a first down on the play, picked up the yards, he stretched out, got those hands out, dove for the marker, picked up the first down, nice effort by the River Kings. We ended up sending more people to rush uh, than I think we probably should have, but I mean, they haven't really been doing anything anyway, so, uh oh, it looks like a challenge is coming out. Ooh, I'm not sure, I, I respect Coach's desire to challenge that, it looked like it was pretty close, I feel like he picked up the first down on that. We haven't been wrong yet, so I don't know why we would be now. <laughs> They're actually listening to us. That's what's happening, guys. You guys don't even Ruling know. Ruling on the field is under challenge. Ruling is spot foul, hit the wall. Mm. So we'll Let's sort that out. Replay. They're kind of arguing back and forth. While we have that opportunity, we'd like to thank a few of our title sponsors. Top Notch Plumbing, Heating and Air, on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eden, and Kersey. On the go breakfast and lunch, Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and rock solid inspiration. FitRx is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. Once again, like I said, we'd really like to thank those sponsors helping us bring this broadcast to you guys there at home listening. As we touch back up on what's going on in the action here, Spartan said it was kind of a back and forth first half, took the lead right before halftime. The River Kings jumped back up on us, got that score 10 seconds before half, took the 14-13 lead into halftime. Spartans had the ball coming out to start the second half, capitalized on that right away, got that touchdown, took the lead 19-14, unfortunately unable to convert the two point conversion. And so now we find ourselves with the lead, 19-14, and the River Kings attempting to see if they will convert this fourth down play. We're waiting to see from the replay officials what the play is, talking about it a lot. I, I do think that this is a first down. Hopefully, this is the first time I'm wrong tonight. Uh, <laughs> but I, I mean, Whitaker getting us in the lead right there with that, that miraculous Brett Favre, as you like yeah, to say, that Patrick was a nice, Mahomes yeah. touchdown. We'll, just use, we'll say Patrick Mahomes. I'm the, yeah, let's stick with Let's stick with Patrick Mahomes. Right. I mean, at least he's still yeah. playing. At least he's still playing and not in any trouble. Yeah, no. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> or maybe it almost kind of looked like Russell Wilson a little bit. A, a little bit like Russell Wilson. I don't think the Broncos fans want to hear that <laughs> at all. But uh, that's okay because we're here for the Colorado Spartans anyway. That's, that's right. That is, that is who all our love and support is going behind. Yep. This home team, Colorado Spartans, this is our inaugural season mm -hmm. of Spartan football here at Blue Arena on your home of Spartan football, Pirate Radio 93.5. We're excited. I'm Stowaway J. Joining me in the booth is Silky, a.k.a. Devontae Branch. Come on now. There it is. Silky. Silky. Man, it just, that sounds so silky. It just rolls. Off your tongue, man. I appreciate that. <laughs> That's so much love. And I'll give it to you all season long. Got Before he hit the ground. So there it is. Yep. The, the play was confirmed. 
after the replay. It is a first down. That is four for four for me and Silky. Yeah, they try yeah. bringing that linebacker on the blitz right there. Left that and space that wide open. that arm tackle just barely, just missed wrapping him up right there. It was a heck of a play. So as the play clock rolls, 12 seconds running down, 6.20 to play in the third quarter. Spartans still leading 19-14. Reed's got two men, man right, man left. He rotates around Reed. left. He's the quarterback sneak. He takes off to the right side, and he's tackled after a, a very short gain. Way to stay. Way to stay. That's a great read by Quentin Peoples, too, to stay right there. Uh, usually most people try to attack that running back because that's what they've been doing most of the game. And, you know, their quarterback tried taking off. That's all. I mean, he's got two completions. Two, two, two. two completions. And they're wide open passes, wide too. Wide open passes, so, brother. And then what happened there? Like Coach said, he takes off. We're going to cut him down. Cut him down. And they cut him down after a short game there. That's what we've been doing most of this game. And nothing's going to change. It's uh, 15 seconds left on the play clock. Second and nine as the clock rolls. Five and a half left to go in the third quarter. Spartans 19, River Kings 14. Man left, man right. Reed sends his men in motion. He's got a quick pass off to the left. Looks like it's caught for a reception. For Daniel Hugan with the gain. Solid throw there. I couldn't see on the back side there. Was it a full completion? It looked like he kind of juggled it. Let did me he, see. Did he drop it? Oh, no, that's a completion. I don't know. Did he pin that on the ground? We're not going to be wrong now. No, <laughs> I'm not, I won't say anything. <laughs> I teams. think that maybe. I'm not, we won't be too, too sure. If we can zoom in a little bit more. For sure. But we're looking at a short game, third and two. The clock rolls, 4.50 to play left here in the third quarter. Reed sends his men in motion left and right. He, there it he is, fakes the, the handoff. He goes out to the left. He's headed to the five-yard line, and he is tackled by the team photo <laughs> at the three-yard line. Looks was like D. Mays was there first. Amongst many others. <laughs> Again, the read. The read, the read, the read. They're going to try to nickel and dime you, but. They did pick up the first down, so it's going to be a first and goal here for the River Kings. Small mistakes turn into big consequences. That's exactly right. We can't have that. So Reed's showing those wheels. Unfortunately, that, that time he was able to evade the tacklers and pick mm -hmm. up the first down, get his team close to a score. So as the play clock rolls, eight seconds left on the play clock, four minutes to go in the third. Spartans 19, River King 14. Reed sends his two men motion. They're split out left and right. He hands the ball off to Bright. Good hit. And he is tackled short of the goal line. Sam Hammond At right about there. the one and a half yard line by University of Nevada product Sam Hammond. I know you guys all used to hear that name, patrolling the sidelines against Colorado State years ago. Well, luckily we've got him on our team this time. And he is a beast. Oh, he's killing it out there right now. So we're looking at second and goal from the, they'll call it the two yard line. Play clock winding, 20 seconds left. River Kings break their huddle. Big man, big man number 91 back in Enoch. there. Enoch, watch that fake again. Watch Enoch that fake. Tucker, is he, is he a ploy? Is he getting the ball? I say he gets the ball this time. Well, let's find out. I don't think so. I think he's, I think he's a phony here. Reed's ready. He hands the ball yep. off to Bright. And he buries in. There's no indication short. yet. The linesman runs in. He's still short. Ooh, short. Good D very, stop. Very, very close. Defense steps up. It's going to be third and goal from about the. Oh, and actually, he fell short. I think that he actually rolled a couple yards. I think he's going to. He maybe even lost a yard on that. All right. Does Enoch get the ball now? I mean, right? Or maybe we're going to get their version of the touch. I, I can see a nice little fake. Quarterback holding the ball for a second, run Th off the opposite way. Third and goal from the one yard line for the River Kings. Two and a half left in the third quarter as the clock rolls. Reed has a man left, man right. He's got Bright behind him. And it's oh, a quarterback he sneak and they he is got him. stuffed. You ain't doing nothing, come on now. <laughs> what you doing out there? Take a photo with him. The defense comes up big on that quarterback sneak by Reed. Uh oh. Uh oh, and there is more laundry on the field once again. That's got to be that's got to be on Reed. He threw the ball right in his face. There's pushing, on the there's shoving. Let's see what they're going to work out exactly what happened. There's a lot of emotions running high down there on that goal line. We had a couple of flags come flying in, so it looked like Jeff Luke was on the ground and Reed got up and spiked the ball right in his face. Maybe a little uh after the game for So we'll st we're still waiting for the official to 
work out exactly what happened on there. They're discussing it. No one's moved yet. There's been no indication, and here comes the official. Dead ball, unsportsmanlike conduct, offense number one. That is his first UNS of the game. 15-yard penalty, dead ball, fourth down. Nice. Ooh, man, that hurts. Yeah. 15-yard hey. unsportsmanlike penalty on number 15 for the River Kings. So that's going to, I'm sorry, that's going to back them up 15 yards. So instead of going from fourth and goal from the one, it's going to be fourth and goal from the 16. You so Spartan defense play the out. end zone. Play the end zone here. They can't do it. They can't get a first down. Just don't leave that receiver wide open like before. Yeah, don't either. But you can see that his temperature is getting high and that he can't do anything. And that's why he slammed the ball in his face, right? I mean, yeah. he, he thinks he believes that he should have been in the end zone right there, and he can't believe that they got stopped. Yep, defense coming up big. Fourth and fourth and goal from the 16. He's got a man left, a man right, bright. His running back's next to him. The ball snapped. Oh. oh. We look like we got a maybe offsides, maybe false start. Hard to say. Everybody's pointing at everybody as usual. <laughs> Nobody's wrong. And the, they're pointing at the Spartans. Here we go. Offside. Defense, number 10, five-yard penalty, fourth down. So it looks like the River Kings are going to chew back five more yards on that penalty on the Spartans. It's going to bring up fourth and 11, or fourth and goal from the 11, rather. We've got a minute 48 left in the third quarter. Spartans leading 19-14 to 14 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. You're listening to Spartans football on their home, Pirate Radio 93.5. The River Kings come up to the line. Still looking for a touchdown. It's still fourth and goal. Men split left and right. He sends him in motion. Reed's got the ball. He looks right. He throws it, it left is. to a man. There it is. Good. Who is tackled Good hit, baby. at the five-yard line. That's going to be a turnover on downs. Way so to wrap we're going to take a quick break as they change possession for about a minute. You are listening to Pirate Radio on your home, 93.5. Deep with it. Get on him. Get on him, baby. D. Wash. Touchdown on the play. D. D Washington. Wash. What an incredible play. We come back from a short commercial break. We apologize if you missed that, folks. Jason Whitaker with the, I don't call it a Hail Mary. It was just a beautiful pass downfield to D. Washington with his second score of the game. What an incredible call by Coach Shaw coming out of the Absolutely. play. Hit him right off the bat, man. What, I, what did I say? Did I say Whitaker can hit a dime from Saturn? What just happened there? That was a beautiful. He hit a D. Washington. Beautiful <laughs> pinpoint throw for Jason Whitaker. So the Spartans build on that lead. Mm -hmm. So it looks like Spartans 25, Cedar Rapids River Kings 14 on the beautiful pass from end zone to end zone, basically. A absolutely. That's Whitaker's third touchdown right there. And that's D. Washington's second touchdown. So it looks like Crow's going to come out for that extra point. We're not going to worry about going for two. The ball is set. It's down. The kick is up, See and it. it's catch blocked. It, catch it, catch it. Oh, 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 oh that blue comes down. down. <laughs> oh, my God. What an incredible play. <laughs> the kick was blocked. Crow tried to catch oh my it. God. Jeff Luke recovered the ball, <laughs> and he carries it into the end zone for the two-point score. Look at this. They're working out. I'm not sure if, Crow can, or if, if Luke can <laughs> advance the ball, though. That's what we're going to wait to find out. I'm not sure if Jeff Luke can advance the ball on that play. We're going to get a ruling here from the official. I think the Caught by the offense. Try is good. Oh, there it is. There it is. So by the, God. So, so maybe, maybe not exactly how they drew it up, quite possibly. So unfortunately for the, Rap the Cedar Rapids River Kings, we capitalized on their block. Yep. Block of our one point, pick up two. Two. I, ain't nobody angry about that. No. Two no. points by number one, Jeff Luke. Yeah, we hey, definitely wanted to pick that Sam up. Sam Hammond actually handed him the ball. 
So those are our big, big D guys. You're gonna hear those names a lot. Jeff Luke, Sam Hammond, obviously you hear us screaming that out. What an incredible, incredible play, turn of events. They're still arguing about it. The River Kings are down there trying to figure stuff out. They're upset, it doesn't matter. Coach Clark is pleading his case. The officials don't wanna hear any of it. No, well, we got two points on the board. Take it like a man and here we are. You're down 27-14 now. Now we put it on. Fourth quarter is coming up. Now is our time to really put it on them. Finish it out, exclamation point, period. So with 22 seconds left in the third quarter, your Colorado Spartans have taken a lead 27 to 14 against the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. This is gonna and be that's good what we're right looking here. for. We said we'll come out after the second yeah. half and turn it oh, on. That's what, we had a couple of small mistakes there at the beginning. Let's see how he does with this kick right here though. <laughs> yes, Mr. Crow, keep it down low, baby. <laughs> Keep Mr. that ball Crow, low. He, keep we, it down low. He's shown that leg. We know you have it. Now just tuck it in a little bit. Absolutely. Just tuck the leg in. Okay. Uh-oh. It looks like, once again, we're going to have a review. While they do that review, we're going to take a quick commercial break. You're listening to your home of Colorado Spartans football on Pirate Radio 93.5 FM. Thirty. And welcome back to Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado reporting from the Ron's Bonds press box high above the field here. Looks like they're still trying to figure it out. They reviewed that extra point or that two point conversion by the Spartans. So they're still kind of discussing what happened. They let everybody take off, line up that on the other field, but then the coach, I guess they must've got another look at it. Thought maybe there was something that happened there. So not really sure there, Silky. I think we, get, we got to try there. I think that's it. It's two points, let's move on. That's what happened. Jeff Luke ran into the end zone like a happy kid that never touched a ball back in flag football in elementary. Okay, <laughs> let the man have this right now. Yeah, I know we know we've got some plays called up for these linemen guys and that was a beautiful recovery by Luke, showing that awareness to pick up that ball. Um, I know that the ball needs to be advanced by the kicker, but I believe once the defensive team touches, touches it, it, then that is kind of an all bets are off. Yep. And the, uh, the, Z the officials are finally coming back out on the field. We're going to try and get this all figured out, and, and here we go from the lead official. After review, the ruling on the field of the try being recovered by the offense on the block is good. There it is. Five for five. My God, man. Five for five. This is incredible. They should stop reviewing, just, just ask. Just listen to us, yeah. <laughs> We're gonna go up to uh, J and D up here. Yeah, here we go. Yeah, halfway <laughs> through game two, we're the experts all of a sudden. I mean, <laughs> it seems like it, five for five, I mean, gosh. So with that score though, the Spartans confirm their lead. Spartans 27, River Kings 14, 22 seconds left in the third. Mr. Crow kicking the ball off, and he kicks it low, there, there it go. is. And he kicked it into the end zone. What a beautiful kick into it's the end go, zone. Go, 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 go. The ball is bouncing Ooh. around. They bring it out deep. He takes it off to the right sideline, and he is shoved up against the wall a couple of times. Looks like Cyrus Taylor there to get the full stop. Return by number 14, Daniel Hugan for the River Kings. So, as the Spartans take a two touchdown, 13 point lead, closing in on the last few seconds of the third quarter. 2-1, we're closing down. We got one minute, we're gonna take another break. Actually, we'll be right back to your home, Colorado Spartans football on Pirate Radio 93.5. Yes, ma'am. And welcome back to Blue Arena from the Ron's Bonds press box high above the field here in beautiful Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado. Your Colorado Spartans are leading 27 to 14 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings as we get ready to start this fourth quarter. 
15 minutes left on the clock. River Kings with the ball. Silky, it's the defense's time once again, baby. Absolutely, yeah. Uh, River Kings, River Otters, uh, Cedar Rapid Rivers, uh, they got to go for it now. They have to go for it now. Our defense has stepped up. They're playing the game. They're playing our game, right? And they have to. They have to take their chances now. They have to stop doing the little read options. You're down two touchdowns. You can't play it safe anymore. You have to start throwing the ball. And that's what we want, because yes. now it forces them to play our game. Give us that ball. Give us the ball. Let we, those DBs show that talent. Yep. I mean, Cyrus Taylor has already got one interception. I can see I can see Javarius Thompson giving one right here. Yep, and real quick, we'd like to thank some of our other sponsors. Top Notch Plumbing, Heating and Air, on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eaton, and Kersey. On the go, breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado's Stonehenge and Rock Solid Inspiration. FitRx is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. Lockhart Home Inspection. Before you buy it, let us spy it. Peace of mind is what you'll find with Lockhart Home Inspection. 970-295-9646. True Bloom Home Service Alley. Handyman services when you don't have the time, tools, or skill. Remember, True Blue Home Service Alley, serving all of Northern Colorado. Get more RE. Jackie Dvorak and get more real estate, helping you with new construction, first-time home buying, and selling. 970-221-ASKJ. Get more RE.com. Pinocchio's Prime, serving up handcrafted prime rib dishes. It's prime time for prime rib. Located at 804 8th Street, downtown Greeley. Reservations are recommended. 303-827-8945. Luminate Mortgage, home Lo Mo Luminate Mortgage Loans. Experience the Luminate Home Loans difference with Mike Campbell by your side. Mike is Northern Colorado's lender for reverse mortgage lending for seniors and home loans for purchasing or refinancing. 970-405-405. 4681. Mallet Insurance, licensed insurance agent focusing on Medicare and senior health solutions. When you have questions, he has the answers. 970-302-0114. And Dr. Danny Elnatan, Chiropractic LLC, revitalize your workplace on-site manual therapy with Dr. Danny Elnatan, enhancing employee well-being one touch at a time, serving all of Northern Colorado. Phone 970-430-430. 5741. And like I said, once again, we want to thank all of our sponsors for helping us bring you this broadcast on your home of Colorado Spartans football here, Pirate Radio 93.5. Just a little touch up. It's the home team, Colorado Spartans, leading 27-14 as we get ready to start this fourth quarter. And here it goes, Silky. Silky smooth here with the beat, okay? Hit. Launch the ball. Launch the ball. Here Let us go. get an interception. So it's first and 10 for the River Kings as the, clock, the play clock winds. Reed's got a man on the left, right. He sends him in motion. He hands the ball off to Bright. He takes it to the right side. He busts through good hit. for a solid gain. That's a good Bodies solid are hit. flying left and right. Once again, there's a lot of action down there on this field. If you have not been here yet, you need to get here for a game to support your new home a National Arena League team, the Colorado Spartans. We are excited to bring you their broadcast. I am Jacob Gover. I am joined by Silky Smooth. Silky smooth, baby. So as we try to work these things out, the, the River Kings are being, they're trying to work stuff out here. They break huddle. They need to stop doing this little run thing. They got to launch the ball. And Reed sends his men in motion. One left, one right. It's a high snap. He brings it down. He throws him. it over the middle. The pass is complete Come on now. Oh, he tried to, to his to. man. He tried to DDT him. That's Shiloh Flanagan on the play. And I would like to take the opportunity to step away from the football action and welcome into the booth someone who shouldn't need any introduction, Brandon Royval, number one contender in the UFC flyweight division. Brandon, welcome to the broadcast. Yeah, you go ahead. <laughs> we'll get you set up. <laughs> it's it's uh, we're, that's silky smooth, maybe right. me not so much. Brandon. <laughs> Thank you so much for joining us. Uh, I am myself am a uh, unabashedly unbiased lover of your game. Um, thank you. <laughs> thank you very much for coming in. Thank you for having me, bro. It's tight. It's and real fun. quick, we jump right back in the action as the River Kings score a touchdown. We're going to go back to Mr. Royval. That's way more exciting. Yeah, I'm going to commentate this. <laughs> yeah, sneak oh on up here. Get on up in oh here. Oh, boy, jumped up and grabbed his butt a little bit. <laughs> <laughs> 
go ahead. I'm so sorry. as we talked about, we introduced you. Everybody knows who you are, Denver native. So what brings you up to the game today, Brandon? Uh, just checking out the Spartans, honestly. Just enjoying the time and just having a good day. Uh, just enjoying the weekend, honestly. Yep. And uh, I will say I caught your fight against Brandon Moreno. I will admit I've always loved Mr. Moreno. I've always loved you. But you put it on him. I mean, you were aggressive. You worked that jab early. You know, he's trying to hug on you. You're trying to shake him <laughs> off of you. You said it after the fight was over with, you know, and now you're coming for that title next. Yeah, yeah, hopefully, bro. Uh, hopefully we can just keep making statements along the way. Um, I feel like as far as being in the UFC and being in the flyway, I've had the roughest schedule ahead of me, and I've only lost to one person, and that's been uh, Alessandro Pantoja. So in my opinion, it's just like it's time to just, one, take him out and then bring that – bring the first bout home to Denver, you know? Yeah, that's what we're looking for. We'll bring one more title here to Denver. Yeah. That would be exceptional to see that happen. I know all the local fans would be psyched to see that. You're very loved in the area. We were talking about your raw dog mentality <laughs> earlier. We were talking about the dogs on the field, and we were like, we've got the real raw dog in the stadium. So thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me, bro. I appreciate you. Nice oh, no, to meet you're you. good. Don't be, oh, you don't be sneaking off yet. Oh, no, we got, oh, you, we got to help us call this play. <laughs> uh, I'm about to call play. <laughs> So as the as the River Kings took that touchdown, they took the lead. Yeah, no, you said you wanted to commentate. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You have to step up here. We'll call some plays a little bit as the Spartans take over here, uh, getting ready to start their possession in the fourth quarter. It's 27 Spartans, 20 River Kings. We've got about 12:30 left to play in the fourth quarter, and okay. and that's what's next for you, right, Pantoja? I mean, he's he's your opponent. You've done fought him a couple times, and now you're looking to change the script, I guess, next time. Yeah, yeah, and I just feel like. Uh, I know I could beat that guy. I know I'm the best in this division. I know uh, as far as being a flyweight, I'm one of the more dangerous, skilled ones out there. And honestly, it's just like these dudes don't want to fight. Like none of these guys want to fight. Even Brandon Moreno, who has like a reputation of being a fighter, he's trying to hug me the whole entire time, trying to run around. It's like none of these guys want to fight me. Uh, they're all just trying to get by. And that's how I felt Pantoja fought last time too. It just trying to get by yeah i noticed that but speaking <laughs> of trying to fight in there these guys are going back and forth go ahead I, I, no no you're good it is it is a battle as the river kings kick the ball off it's a little bit of a squig and it bounces oh, out of bounds and we hit an innocent girl on the sidelines <laughs> this is, is what i really came here well, for we said <laughs> <laughs> to see that and excitement along see the some sideline. bystanders get taken out yeah <laughs> we, we talked about the you get close to the action you go into the crowd you might have to watch out you might knock out one of those players they're not going to hit you out of, out of bounds <laughs> i know we're, i was staying on my toes over there though honestly i like, still back a little bit just making sure but yeah i feel like i'm in a kind of safe place for the most part now i would think you'll be fine we don't want anything to happen to you we definitely are excited for that opportunity you know i was wa i watched your fight and it was exactly what you happened it almost looked like moreno gave up at the end he started hugging on you he started doing the heel the foot stomp <laughs> and once dudes start hugging and foot stomping then you know they're getting desperate <laughs> yeah yeah and i thought that i was telling my cornerman that too i'm like i don't think he's like there's something weird going on like he's not trying to fight like the first round he's walking around and just dancing and then his uh his corner Oh, he takes off. There it is. As the Spartans take over on downs here, they throw the ball out to Kadarius Campbell. He picks up a nice little short gain there. We're joining in the booth here with Brandon Royval, number one UFC flyweight, number one contender in the UFC flyweight division, and he's helping me bring this broadcast to you. <laughs> yeah, yep. Uh, but, yeah, I could tell his cornerman, they were like, good job, good job. And I'm like, good job. He's just running away. Is this a, is this a game plan? Yeah, so, you definitely took it at him. I mean, you were the aggressor. Twice as many punches thrown here really quick. The Spartans send men in motion. Whitaker sees his man off to the right. The pass oh, is complete yeah. to D-Wash. Looks like it might be a little bit short. When it hits the boards like that, are they just done? Yeah, that's the out of bounds, basically. So, oh, okay. So, yeah, exactly. If you get tackled up out of the, uh, up against the wall, you are technically dead. You're out of bounds. The ball is live, though. So if the ball bounces off of the wall before it hits the ground, if you can catch it, receive it, whatever, it's still a live ball. So a oh, couple okay. kind of crazy little things here with the Arena League game. So... <laughs> This is going to be cool, bro. I hope this blows up in Colorado. This is awesome. You know, I know the team before them was really killer. Whitaker sends his men in motion. He looks left. He looks right. He throws the ball deep. He's got a man in the end zone. Oh, he overthrows his receiver. He had Troy Evans, one of them junior babies, trying to catch that to catch that touchdown. Unfortunately, fell up a little bit short. That's that's D. That's Silky's favorite players there. <laughs> the junior mints, unfortunately. So we're looking at fourth and two. For the Spartans, trying to convert, leading here 27 to 20 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. Ten minutes to play left in the fourth quarter. Like I said, once again, joined in the box by Brandon Royval. And uh, so, yeah, we're very excited to get you to be here. You can see already it's going to turn into something fun for the local fans. Yeah, yeah, for sure. This is your guys' first game ever? This is their first regular season game. They had an exhibition game last week, so... 
trying to definitely jump on this visiting team. Spartans Oy, going motion. No, 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 there's no, no. a little misdirection there. There's some confusion. The ball is on the ground. The River Kings have jumped on it, and the official is signaling it is a River Kings ball. So they will re recapture the ball down 27 to 20, 10, 12 left to go in the fourth quarter. And they're now they're going to be threatening. Uh, once again, I want to jump back here and kind of just chat about you a little bit, Brandon. Um, just talk about your evolution from in Denver, you know, kind of growing up in this area, bringing that love and respect to the area as a fighter. Just talk about all the great fighters and yourself, just kind of how you got. Oh, it brings, it means real to me. I feel like the important, the most important thing I could do is bring a title back to Denver, and I'm going to do that. And the reason I want to do that, and I think that's super important, is because it, it allows the uh, possibilities of everyone around me. Uh, it, it also just allows the, the possibilities of everybody else around me dream come true because it's like, I didn't even realize being in the UFC was possible until I seen someone do it, you know? And someone close to me got signed to the UFC, and I remember I'm like, oh, he made his dreams come true? That's crazy, and I didn't even think that was an option, you know? So I was just fighting and just trying to, I just wanted to be a good fighter to protect myself, and, you know, uh, I enjoyed fighting. So <laughs> I just wanted to be good for, like, personal reasons, and then it was just like, oh, this could be a possible career opportunity. And it's like, that never even registered in my mind until I seen it. And it's like, if you can see it, then, then it's achievable for sure. But if you can't see it around you, then it's, it's a lot harder. And uh, I always felt like that uh, that was one of the big changing moments when I seen Chris Camozzi get signed to the UFC and have a couple fights. And uh, that meant the world to me, and that changed my, changed my idea of how I was approaching MMA. Was I going to be a fighter, or was I going to be uh, was I going to be a fighter just for the streets, or was I going to be an actual fighter for a potential career? And uh, that was really just kind of flipped a switch in me of what I wanted to do. Well, you're life. definitely an impressive fighter. I'll say that enough. The River Kings taking over here on downs. They hand the ball off. They they broach over across the line of scrimmage. Now he is sat. He's tackled back for a short loss. He tried to get some positive yards. Uh, we're joined in the booth by Brandon Royval, just local, absolute stud. Going to be champion, Been battling, guys. fighting for that. Like I said, you you are a raw dog. There is no doubt that you have that nickname for a reason. You get in there, you scrap, you fight, and it's very evident that, that your heart is right there in it every time. Yeah, I appreciate that, man, and I, I feel like that too. Just like I, I hope uh, anytime I fight, people get a piece of me. You know what I'm saying? Like a little piece of what I put into this. And the River Kings at second and 13 after that loss. Since both men split right in motion. The ball's hiked. He drops back for Reed. He throws it up in the air. He's got a man in the end zone. Oh! oh. Damn, I'm sure. That's what's up. That is what's up. Number 15, Terrell Williams breaking up the pass in the end zone. So it's going to be fourth and 13 for the River Kings here. As the clock winds here in the fourth quarter, there is 8.56 left to play in the fourth quarter. Spartans leading 27 to 20 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. So what do you think so far? Um, it's been amazing, man, honestly. Uh, so far, it's just been brutal. It's, it's been a little bit of everything, man. I feel like all these guys, like to be a, an arena football player, you gotta be a little bit of that fighter mentality anyways, because this is uh, a little more brutal than normal football, and normal football is brutal. <laughs> <laughs> You'd say that right. It is fast paced, it's, ha it's action, it is happening. River Kings here, third and 13. Two men in motion, Reed drops back. He's got a man over the middle. It's his running back number two, Tremont Bright. He's, fat, he's fighting for yards. He's still fighting for yards. He doesn't want to give up. Linesman finally blows the play dead there at about the 16, 17 yard line. So that's going to bring up a fourth down for the River Kings. So we're looking for that big defense. Silky and I have been talking about our defense is our bread and butter, Brandon. They just, the that's offense right. will get rolling, but that defense is something special. Um, and so we're looking for a big stop here on fourth and four. As the clock winds, the River Kings are still sitting in their huddle trying to figure out what this magical fourth down play is going to end up being. So they break huddle. Reed's got a man right next to him. He's got two men lined up out right, wide right. He sends his men in motion. The ball's hiked. He's looking hard right. He looks left. He throws it over left. What a Oy. The pass is broken up once again by number 15, Terrell Williams. My what boy, an incredible, incredible play. My boy Terrell Williams put that ball right into the boards too. That was crazy. <laughs> 
He's not messing around as we check out the replay. The ball is there. He's like, all right, maybe a little bit of extracurricular, a little, a little something on the back, you know, maybe all trying right. to help the guy out just to make sure he didn't need that help. <laughs> make sure that ball's not coming. The ball's already <laughs> on the ground. He's like, here you go. Uh. So as we change possessions, we're going to take a quick commercial break. Once again, I would love to thank my guest, thank Brandon Royval. Good luck for you in the future, appreciate brother. You are fantastic. It has been an honor having you on the radio. We wish you the best of luck. Future, pre future champion, baby. Thank you, bro. Go Spartans. And welcome back to Blue Arena here in Loveland, Colorado, high above the field in the Ron's Bonds press box. I am your host, Jacob Grovero, Stowaway J. Joining me in the booth, as we've said multiple times, Devontae Branch, a.k.a. Silky. Silky, we needed that stop. Where did I go for a minute? You dude? did. You disappeared. Where did I go? You just, I like, you were gone. I, I feel like I turned into a, a UFC flyweight, man. Like, oh, a, man. what happened? You know what? You know what? Let's, <laughs> let's see. You guys, you guys duke it out. No, nah, I, I don't think that's going to be smart at all. <laughs> I we'll think see. that's the last little bit of me you see. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that was fantastic. Man, what an honor hand, having Absolutely. Brandon Royval in the press box. Uh, we talked about him. I've mentioned it multiple times. The number one contender in the UFC flyweight division mm -hmm. had an awesome five-round battle with Brandon Moreno recently. We got a battle going right here. Yes, we do. Yes, we do. We got Our defense got a big stop right there, though. Great stop. Terrell Williams with two big deflections, man. I mean, what a way to step up. He's in the right place at the right time. One of those possibly could have been picked off. But, hey, we got the ball. It's time to score. Oh, let's show them what the Spartans do right now. And with that, there's 729 left in the fourth quarter. River King's still threatening. As Whitaker steps back. Oh, oh. Oh, oh, D. Wash, almost the beautiful one-handed catch. He's pointing like he caught it. We need right off the. We need to check this one out in the replay one more time and see whether or not that ball made it or not. Because he was arguing like maybe he did. He's got his hands up in the air. I honestly, I don't think he caught that ball. No, I don't think so either. But it was another. And Whitaker is really taking some chances with these tight fits here. I say, we, you know what we do again? We go ahead and launch this thing. You know yeah, what I'm right saying? On, right on. So as the clock clicks down, 6.54 left in the fourth quarter. Spartans leading 27 to 20 with the ball. Second and 10. Whitaker has a man left, a man right. They go in motion. He's got the ball snapped. He looks right. He Mark. snaps it off to Campbell. On him. Campbell tries to evade a tackle. He's taken down oh, after a very short game, two or three all here on the, on the uh, game. So. That was an ankle bite right there, brother. That was an ankle bite if I've ever seen one. That was one. an ankle bite and tackle, just barely Absolutely. kind of picked him up. Sean McGee with the ankle bite. Once again, we want to thank our sponsors, Lockhart Home Inspection. Before you buy it, let us buy it. Peace of mind is what you'll find with Lockhart Home Inspection, 970-295-9646. Brand Designs and Just AI Media. Techie Tracy is your web design and AI connection. And here we go as the game starts back up. The Spartans have the ball. Man in motion. Whitaker off to the left to D-Wash. He there shakes the tackle. And it looks like he has fought for first yard, first down yardage. He's shaking his head. He's saying yes. The team seems to say yes. D. Walsh showing that leadership like we talked about already, stepping up, making the big catch on the play, helping those Spartans gain that first down. That wall is his friend right there. The wall is his friend. Tiptoe through the tulips, as we like to say. <laughs> <laughs> yes, dancing in the daisies. <laughs> Flaunting in the flowers. <laughs> we drove it. Where what does it song come is from? This? <laughs> I've never heard of this before. So five and a half left to play here in the fourth quarter in the game. Spartans leading 27-20. First and ten from their own 22-yard line. Two men right. Whitaker throws it off to the right. Go ahead. Two. Mr. Newbold. He Go shakes ahead, a tackle. Newbold. He shakes another one. Man, that guy's got That's moves. A... He's still battling. Fights his way for the first down. Oh, maybe a little bit a little short, short, maybe a little bit short. But what an incredible battle for Steve Newbold. Man, that guy's strong. Man. He's got moves. Boy, go out and get that jersey. Steven Newbold Jr., the shaker. The okay, sh the shake in Baker. <laughs> we love him. We're loving him. We're really showing that we have these skilled players on the team for the Spartans. Clock clicking down one more time. Like I said, 4.50 left to play. 
Spartans leading 27-20 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. I mean, they're doing smart right now, right? Small passes, get the yardage, take the time off the clock, but we still are very capable of getting in the end zone right now. Second and one on the play, two minute motion. Whitaker throws it off, a snap throw off to the right. Steve nice. Newbold once again, he's gonna pick up the first down. There we go. Once again, thanking Top Notch Plumbing, Heating and Air. On call 24-7, Larimer, serving Larimer and Weld County's topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eaton, and Kersey. On the go, breakfast and lunch, Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado's Stonehenge and Rock Solid Inspiration. Fit RX is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-RX.com. And here we go with the Spartans still leading this game as the clock clicks down. 3.55, under four minutes. Whitaker has a man left, that's D. Wash. He has a man right, that's Steve Newbold. He looks left, he throws it off to the left to Troy Evans Ooh. Jr. who is open. Man, he, what He fights hit. for a brutal five yard gain. And so, so as we, the clock continues to click, three and a half left to play, Spartans 27, River Kings 20. I just want to give a shout out to one of our sponsors right here, Luminate Mortgage Loans. Experience the Luminate Home Loans difference with Mike Campbell by your side. Mike is Northern Colorado's lender for reverse mortgage lending for seniors and home loans for purchasing and refinancing. 970-405-4681. And Brand Designs and Just AI Media. Techie Tracy is your web design and AI connection. She builds and maintains websites and also help you navigate the world of artificial intelligence Branddesigns.com and AI.media. Well, Silky, it wasn't quite the second half blowout. You know, we still got a little bit of time left. Yep. The Spartans definitely often started rolling here to get things going. Then once again, the little mistakes kind of started to slow us down a little bit. That being said, we're threatening second and goal from the four yard line. We scored this touchdown and I'm gonna start feeling pretty good. I don't want to get too heady, but mm -hmm. Whitaker's got all of his receivers, line, everything lined up to the right. The ball snapped. He fakes the handoff to Campbell. He throws it in the back of the end zone. Oh, it is broken up on the play once again. I think we need to get something a little bit more in the front of the end zone right here. Yeah. Troy Evans once again upset on the play. I think he's feeling like he's getting open. He's looking. Oh, he, ha he did have him open for a split second, but that's a tight window. That was a tight window. The defense had him played pretty good on there. I understand his frustration, but... Whitaker saw him about as quickly as he had the opportunity to throw it, unfortunately. So as the ball falls to the turf, the clock continues to run with 2.55 left in the game. Spartans leading 27-20 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. Whitaker's got a man left, he's got a man right. That's Newbold to his left. Evans to his right, sends his man in motion. And we've got a flag on the play. It looks like it's probably gonna be a false start. False start. Offense, number 73, five-yard penalty, third down. So that is going to back us up five yards on Naz Jones. Unfortunately, the five-yard penalty. So it's going to be third and nine for the Spartans. Clock stopped at 2.42 left to play in the game. Third and nine, still leading 27-20. Silky, they're over there talking about it, trying to figure out what to play. We got two downs to convert this. We got to get in the end zone, though. There's no first down on this bed. Back shoulder throw. Back, Back shoulder, shoulder throw. That's, I'm going for the end zone right here. Last time you called it, it worked. Let's see if we can do it again. Whitaker sends us mid in motion. That's Newbold Evans. He actually hands the ball off Come to on, Newbold. Buddy. He shakes, he jukes. Oh, go, go, go. he's looking for a guy in the end zone, and he is drugged down. A little bit of trickery looked yeah. like they were trying to pull on there. Maybe Newbold was looking to throw the ball down. He didn't have anybody open. Good play by him, though, swallowing that ball, Absolutely. not trying to force something into the end zone, possibly risk an interception, and because we can still kick a three. You know, we can still get this field goal, make go up by two if we have to. It looks like that's exactly what they're talking about right now. Yeah, looks like they were trying to do some Philly special, actually. And it looks like they've got a timeout on the field. We're going to take a quick 30-second break. You're listening to your home, Colorado Spartans, on Pirate Radio 93.5.
and welcome back to beautiful Blue Arena, high above the field in the Ron's Bonds press box at Loveland Arena, or at Loveland, Colorado, rather. <laughs> Blue Arena, baby. <laughs> I'm so excited, I'm just getting mixed up. Man, we're just, it's just, we're just so high above right now, you know? <laughs> we're just so high above. <laughs> so we've got 227 left in the game. Spartans fourth and goal from their eight. Looks like they're gonna kick that field goal. Mr. Crow lining up. I know, I got quiet, I, I didn't want to, I thought he could hear me. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a hush falls over the announcers. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> the ball's placed, Crow kicks it up, the ball's up. Oh! oh wide left. Him. Wide left, and look at the awake. The, Man. The good awareness. That. Quentin yes. Peoples right there. Yeah, that was a very Quentin headsy Peoples. play. Tackling him in the end zone, not Man. letting him pull that ball out. So now we're gonna, now it's gonna get close now, Silky. Oh yeah. This, this the ball, is. looks like the ball will be placed on the five yard line. Yep. So they're gonna be pinned deep. So this defense that we've got that's hungry, they're gonna, mean, th are they gonna come after him? They have, this is the two minute drill essentially. Right, they have to. They have to get this ball down here. And they have to score a touchdown. There is nothing else they can actually do right now. You're absolutely right. Quick, one more time, I'd like to thank our title sponsors: Top Notch Plumbing, Heating, and Air. On call 24/7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties. TopNotchPlumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eden, and Kersey. On the go breakfast and lunch. Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway One and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and Rock Solid Inspiration. And here we go as the River Kings take over from their four or five yard line, two minute in motion. And it's a quarterback sneak there by Reed is, and he's he gonna is. pick up that first yard, get first down yardage. Oh, and then we got a flag on the play, maybe a little bit uh, after the play action it looks like. Hopefully that's not gonna tack more yardage no. onto the play. Looks like it's against them. Looks like it against the uh, Against uh, the oysters. River Kings. <laughs> the Oysters. <laughs> So as we wait for the exact ruling on the field. On the offense, number 64, half the distance to the goal. Replay first down. Ooh, we like that. We like that. Not only does it take time off the clock, it also pushes them back a little bit closer to their end zone. Looking for that game ending safety, Silky. Oh, it's about to be a silky smooth finish. I can feel it. I'm telling you right now. I can see Jeff Luke getting in. I can see Quentin Peoples hitting them hard. The referee blows his whistle to, to run the play clock. 18 seconds left on that. The game clock's down to two minutes. 27 Spartans, 20 River Kings. First and 10 from the two and a half yard line for the River Kings. Reed sends his men in motion. He hands the ball off to his running back. He's oh. tackled right at the goal line. Another flag more on the flags, play. More flags, more hankies on the field. I think it's going to be against the, uh, the Rapids here. So it looks like they're trying to, nope. Five yard penalty, replay, first down. So we're gonna replay that first down again. Five for six. <laughs> I, I can't always Well, we didn't talk about it. We, we didn't convert, we weren't, you know. <laughs> it, wasn't, it wasn't a consensus. It was, it was a split decision on that one. I wasn't quite sure. You're not letting me off the hook on that one, brother. <laughs> <laughs> That's all right. So that, that gives a five yard penalty against the Spartans. They're gonna bring it out to about the seven yard line. River Kings trying to get that touchdown before the end of the game, try to tie it up here. They've got a man left, two men right rather. He sends him in motion, the ball snapped, it's a high snap. Here it is! It's in the end Here zone. it is! And he kicks it out of the end zone. The ball's out of bounds in the back of the end zone. I believe that is gonna be Safety. one point. Let me see. I see the referee put his hand up in the air. I believe that's going to be a one point. We're going to wait for the official ruling. I believe when an offensive player bats the ball out of his end zone, yep. it's a one point. With <laughs> both Spartan defenders winning <laughs> out of bounds. And I, 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 I sit corrected. Two so that's there two points. Is. The defense the defense came up there. Yeah, what we were just talking about a silky smooth finish. That was not silky smooth by the Cedar Rapids River Not Kings. by them, but by us. So, unfortunately, that's probably going to haunt them for the next week. That's it. There's a bad snap yep. on that play. It went over the quarterback's head into the back of the end zone. He didn't have much option to do anything other than try to kick the ball up in the air. He tried to bat it behind his head. Yep. Unfortunately, the ball went out of bounds out of the back of the end zone. Uh, I guess that's a safety whenever the offensive team ha is having the ball. So, that's two points for your Spartans. Spartans take the lead 29 to 20, minute 22 left to play in this game. And barring some sort of unforeseen crazy ending, 
It's starting to look good. You know, I never like to say never. We got still have a minute and 20 left to play in this Absolutely. game, but we got to be feeling good. The home crowd's getting happy. They're hyped. They're, they got their hands up in the air. We got people out here shirtless, waving their towels around like they're terrible towels. Uh, they're terrible. Put the shirt back on. How about that? Put that shirt back on. <laughs> look at this. Look at this Viking right here. Are you saying nobody <laughs> wants to see that? I don't yeah. know. That dude's shredded. What are you talking about? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He eats a lot of shredded chicken. I promise you that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> Silky. Always giving that beautiful in-game analysis. <laughs> He's not the best colored man in the game for nothing, folks. <laughs> so on that play, we're going to have a kickoff by the River Kings to the Spartans with a minute 22 left to play. Spartans what? leading 29-20. Quick recap. Spartans a little struggling out the gate. Fell behind 14, 13 at halftime, but we jumped all over them to start the ha second half. Scored a beautiful touchdown mm -hmm. on a gorgeous pass by Jason Whitaker to Dewash for the for the touchdown. A little bit of back and forth. Sees the game at 29-20 with the River Kings kicking the ball off to the Spartans, and it's a little squibber. Oh, and it, oh, man, we got the hands team in there right now. Whew, that was a beautiful. Hey. Kadarius Campbell takes the shot, but he holds on. Hey, that's the first shot I've seen him take. He's usually giving them out <laughs> for free, too. Yes, that was an incredible. What good concentration, though. Yeah, yes, he did. Because the ball got tipped at the line, and he actually caught it off a of deflection using the incredible concentration to not only catch the ball, but then to be able to hold on to it while he was getting hammered by everyone mm -hmm. else on the Cedar River, Cedar Rapids River Kings team. Say it five times fast, hey, we talked about it. We only that. have a minute left of saying this horrendous name. So, <laughs> and we'll be, we'll be on our way after that and we don't have to say these guys' names again. So like Silky said, a minute to play left in the game. Spartans with the ball, first and 10, up 29-20. I bet that's the, Keystone light section right there. So it looks like the crowd is excited. We got everybody's hands in the air. They're waiting for this Spartans victory. We got one minute left in the game. Barring, like I said, some sort of unforeseen miracle. Run we'll see what down. happens. So Whitaker has a man left, a man right. It's New Polden Evans. They switch to the left side. There you go. He hands it off to Come on, boy. Darius Campbell. He's, he's Come on, headed boy. to the left. He's yeah. headed to the end zone. That's he a touchdown on him. Zone. That's that's, another. And that is ball game, baby. You know what we're calling that? We're calling that the bully zone. Every time you touch the ball, that's the bully zone, baby. With the bully zone. Kadarius Campbell with the bully zone. Look at him. He, already, he knocked a mat off the sideline there. Now. Ooh. Ooh. We Ooh. needed that. So instead of sitting, waiting, Trying to run out the clock, the Spartans are like, you know what, we don't like the way that score looks. It looked way better with a two touchdown victory. Absolutely. Put the exclamation point on it. That's Kadarius Campbell's second touchdown of the game. And it was a beautiful run. Look at this bully. He headed to the left. He shook to the left. He kind of broke a little mini arm tackle. And he dove to the end zone. He crawled Man. to the end zone. Hey, shout out to D. Washington for that block right there, too, though. That is not going unnoticed, brother. Yep, you don't get in there without the help with your friends. Absolutely. <laughs> So Crow lines up to kick that extra point one more time. The ball is about to be snapped, snapped, and set. He kicks the ball is up, and oh, it's, it's wide off. left again. Man, it is a tiny, tiny field goal. Yeah. That is for sure. For those who have never seen it, it you think that this is going to be easy. Trust me, this is not easy. Yeah, it would be hard enough throwing it between there, at least oh. for me. <laughs> oh, absolutely. I would, yeah, no. There's no way I could throw it in there. So after the mixed extra point with 54 seconds left in the fourth quarter, your Colorado Spartans are leading 35 to 20 over the visiting Cedar Rapids River Kings. And uh, it would take, I, I think we can safely say now, I don't want to jinx this, it would take quite a miracle. Yeah, it would take millions of River Kings <laughs> to come back here. Um, they might as well call their River Queens and their River Princes. To come pick them up. To come pick them up. It's time to go home. You've been out too long. Yep. yep. You know, you've been out too long. We've been calling you, and you ain't answered. It's time to get back. It's time to it's go back home. It's time to get back to the plains. Yeah. yeah, it's okay. Take this loss like a man. It's okay. So it took us a little bit of time to get going, as we said, second half team, mm -hmm. and uh, that, that came to fruition one more time here. So uh, we still do have a little bit of time left on the clock. 
Uh, one more time, thanking our title sponsors, Top Notch Plumbing, Heating, and Air, on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld Counties, topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eden, and Kersey. On the go, breakfast and lunch, Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and Rock Solid Inspiration. Fit RX is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-Rx.com. And here we go, like I said, 54 seconds left to play as the Spartans kick it off to the River there Kings. What a beautiful kick by Mr. Crow. Field at the two-yard line. He brings it out of the yard. He's at the 25. He's at the Rip 20. Rip that thing out. <laughs> D's not ready. Silky's not ready to go. He wants more action. You want Man, more scoring. Rip I, that ball out. I always want to see more action. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? That's what we're here for. So a solid return by the River Kings. They're bringing the ball out to about the... 19 yard line of the Spartans, but barring, like I said, once again, something incredible, mm -hmm. something crazy. This is gonna be it. This so. is it. This is official, official win for us. 48 seconds left, that's bold. You, you. Ah, you. man, I say a lot of bold things. I'm a bold type of guy. <laughs> I like bold spices, bold seasonings. Bold go, you're gonna go out on a limb and say this is that? I, you know, I'm, it's a wobbly limb too. <laughs> <laughs> He's going to fall right off into a victory, hopefully. <laughs> That's what we're looking for as the River Kings look to try to get a score on here. Two men out right. He sends him in motion. It's another high snap. Reed brings it down. Pick it off. He turn checks around. it up in the air towards the end zone. The ball falls incomplete. We got a flag on the play. Looks like, it, yep, you got it, baby. Yeah. Looks like we might have pass interference in the end zone. That's so okay. As we wait to see what happened, we'll wait to get the official call from the referee. Still trying to figure out what that call is. Spartans are pleading their case. Deep. It looks like. Defense, number five, 15-yard penalty, first down. Well, that's D. Mays there on the pass interference penalty. Um, he didn't like it. He thought maybe there was maybe just a little coincidental contact, a little sh shoving and pushing by on each other. As we look at the replay, yeah, it looks like he was there a little early. He kind of had his hands in his chest. Didn't never look back, didn't give him the opportunity to get the ball. So the ball will be spotted at the three yard line. So it's going to be first and goal. All of a sudden, first and goal for the River Kings. I never say never. Yeah. So first and goal from the three yard line. 43 seconds left to play. Man left, man right, sends him in motion. The ball is snapped. He hands it off to Bright, and we were whistling once again. They blow, blow, blow the play dead. Let's see what happened. Trying to discuss it. We don't see, I don't see a penalty on the flat on the play, no. so I'm not really sure what may have happened. The whistle was blown for sure though. He and probably took a hot breath. That's probably yeah. all that was. <laughs> and they're putting the ball back on the same spot, so not really sure exactly what they called there. Okay. So either way. They must be getting paid by the second. <laughs> That's what that is. <laughs> first, first and goal still. Gonna replay that down. River Kings split left, split right. Reed looks at his men. He sends them in motion. The ball is hiked. It's a good hike. He hands it off to Bright, who takes it, ooh, towards the end zone. And touchdown. the official calls a touchdown on the play. Well, I'm not sure. It looked really, really close, but the official was right there, so surely he had an idea. Let's see if the knee maybe hit first. Does the knee hit the ground before he's in? Oh, yeah, he's, he's down. He's down. He's yeah, down. we got a flag and on the play flag. now, too. Coach, Coach Brooks is out there so angry Second he got a one. flag thrown on him. And oh, then there's, there's another flag on the Spartans, so it looks like we got to give the officials the opportunity to sort this sort of thing out. Try to not get too emotional, unfortunately. They got a little bit unhappy on that one, trying to plead our case. I feel like if we would went to replay, that might have been overturned. It looked really, really close. It was bang, bang. Yeah. Knee down or not. So he was short. Uh, but now we got some two penalties. You know, I think the the rapid uh, raging oysters are uh, trying to elongate this. To play dead ball on sportsmanlike conduct on the coaching staff. That penalty will be banked on the kickoff. One on time down. What was the other one? So that was unsportsmanlike conduct on Coach. Coach Brooks coming off the sideline to plead his case. I seen two flags though. Uh-oh, uh-oh. 
touchdown is under officials review. Okay. Well, and we and we figured that. Yeah. That was what we were talking about the whole time. That's why I understand the emotions getting raging. Definitely it's a hype game. You want to stop them here. You don't want to give up any more points. Give them even the slightest iota. That's inkling. Inkling. Iota. You used two big words today. <laughs> You used two big, what was the other one? Minouche? Was it a minutia? The minutia? Minutia. The minutia of the game, the that, ins and outs. Man, the, uh, that sounds like a Greek goddess, or it sounds like a massage <laughs> method. <laughs> minutia. A minutia. We're gonna, uh, after, the, after the game is over, all these players are going to need a little minutia then. I'm going to need a little minutia. <laughs> now, you're talking about the massage, not the. Well, <laughs> no, nah, we're going to talk about the massage. <laughs> we're going to talk about the massage. <laughs> <laughs> so as we wait for that official review from the official, trying to sort this out, like I said, we, I think we're six for six. I'm six for six. You're going to be six for seven. Um, oh, <laughs> man. We're going to call me out like that? Okay. <laughs> I don't think. No, we're a team. I take that back. I take it no, back. No, 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 no. You got to hold me accountable. No, this well, is right. That's, that's what friends do. You okay. hold me accountable. Okay. That's I'll a, take it. Are we, just like that, after two broadcasts for friends. I've, I've known you a little bit longer than that, but. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, that's fantastic. Um, not really sure what they're gonna, what's gonna end up sorting out on that because of all the penalties mm -hmm. and the touchdown review. So uh, we're gonna see they're definitely looking that thing over. I thought he fell down short personally. I thought his oh. knee was down before he, before the ball broke the plane. Oh, he was 100% down. Uh, the line judge only seen the ball go to the plank. Nobody seen the knee go down. This is what this review is about. We're yeah. just looking at the knee. It's a very bang bang play. I mean, it's really close. He kind of lost the ball a little bit too as he crossed mm -hmm. the goal line. So, um, but he was definitely down. Not going to be a change of possession on that, but we're definitely, definitely going to be something interesting happening here. Absolutely. Um, while we wait, why don't we thank a few of our sponsors? Lockhart Home Inspection. Before you buy it, let us buy it. Peace of mind is what you'll find with Lockhart Home Inspections. 970-295-9646. Luminate Mortgage Loans. Experience the Luminate Home Loans difference with Mike Campbell by your side. Mike is Northern Colorado's lender for reverse mortgage lending for seniors and home loans for purchasing or refinancing. 970-405-4681. Pinocchio's incredible Italian scratch Italian cooking just like Noni used to make. Pinocchio's Italian, incredible Italian, located at 905 16th Street in Greeley, reservations 303 827-8945 website eat at pinocchios.com true blue home service alley handyman services when you don't have the time tools or skill remember true blue home service alley serving all of northern colorado mallet insurance licensed insurance agent focusing on medicare and senior health solutions when you have questions he has the answers 970-302-0114 brand designs and just ai media Techie Tracy is your web design and AI connection. She builds and maintains websites and also help you navigate the world of artificial intelligence. Branddesigns.com and AI.media. Homes for NoCo Real Estate. Score on your home goals with no Homes for NoCo Real Estate, Northern Colorado's home team. From kickoff to victory, we can help you to your dream home. Whether you're in the market to buy, sell, or invest, let us help you with a winning game plan tailored just for you. Homes for NoCo.com. Dr. Danny Elnatan Chiropractic LLC. Revitalize your workplace on-site manual therapy with Dr. Danny Elnatan. Enhancing employee well-being one touch at a time. Serving all of Northern Colorado's phone 970-430-5741. And it looks like the replay is almost figured out as we see the officials finally coming away from the booth. We're going to get an announcement here shortly on what exactly what happened on that play. We've had a lot of back and forth figuring this stuff out, and here we go. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Mm. Touchdown. Well. I guess so. six for seven. They did that in spite. They, <laughs> they did that in spite. I'm sure of they it. They knew that they just had to make us wrong one time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you had. We've had a conversation with him. We, we know. And well, and it must have been really bang, bang. You know, when they slowed it down, he must, the ball, the front end of the ball must have just barely broke that plane. So as we see, 37 seconds left in the game. Spartans 35, River Kings 26. They line up to take it for two. Reed is under center. He's got two men behind him. He sends the man right in motion. He hands the ball off to his big man, there number go, 91 baby. Enoch. And they are stuffed. Bottle them up. Bottle them up. Bottle them up. Bottle them up. All right, easy now, easy now. 
No. What an incredible hey, defensive stand. That's a big man. That All that momentum, you can't carry that. Are that's you kidding true. me? You got to take that man down. Beautiful defensive stand there on the two-point conversion by the Spartans, holding the Cedar Rapids River Kings to just the six points there. So we look at the score now one more time. Colorado Spartans 35, Cedar Rapids River Kings 26. 37 seconds left to go in the game. And now, Silky, we get the ball kicked off. Got to figure they're going to be doing a, basically an onside kick situation once again. Yep. So Coach is going to have his hands team out there, as we like to say. Everybody's going to be saying, get that ball down. Just bring it down, bring yep. it down. Everything's got to be safe here. And then when we get the ball, guess what? Knees, and that's it. That's game. All right? We knee in that river. So the home crowd here is excited. You can see them all leaning up against the wall here, just hungry for this first regular season victory for the Colorado Spartans. The River Kings trying to deny them, but with not, down by nine with 37 seconds left to play, it's gonna take two scores to turn this game around, and I just don't think they've got that magic Man, in them. It's gonna take a, a Tracy McGrady, Reggie Miller act right here, and that's not about to happen, so. I like, I like it. You dropped that Reggie Miller for me. You're, you're going to be my favorite all the time. I promise you that. Oh, I love the ones that trash talk. Those are my Charles Barkley, baby. Come on now. That's a big surprise. You like the talkers. Oh, that's such a shocker, isn't it? Here we go now as the Cedar Rapids lines up for their kickoff after the score. Coach has all of his men up front. The only one back is Steve Newbold. He's sitting at about the 13-yard line. And they pooch. kick it up in the air, and it's a pooch. Good. And it is brought down by the Spartans. Looking to see who got that ball on there. He's got a, guy, a bunch of guys around him. Looks, Looks like, like that was Javaris Thompson yes, right there. Yes, number 20 got the D back in there. Like we said, the hands team. So with 37 sec 36 seconds left to play, the Spartans feeling good now. I think we all feel good. It's good to get that first official win, right? It shows that we are actually able to compete. I mean, yeah, we played a semi-pro team first, but here we are now playing a legitimate team. Yeah, finally getting some real Arena League action, the National Arena League here. As your Spartans are huddled up, trying to decide how they're gonna play out this last few seconds of this game. You think that they're gonna go for a, a touchdown here? <laughs> Well, you never know. I mean, you could throw it. You could just th give the ball to Campbell and let him do his thing. Let him bully. I mean, that's what he did last time, and and then we got six points out of it. So, yeah. you know, I wouldn't mind seeing a 40 spot thrown up on there. It would look way better than that 35. You know what I want to say? I'm going to say go ahead and get uh, Mr. Rodriguez a touchdown here. Let him come out. You think so? Do a little oh, fake? Man, let the, let the big man enjoy it. Look, he's talking right now. Look. He's like, give me the ball. I'm hungry. Oh, what are they? A little pad on Nas's behind. Three down linemen. Refs are coming in. Two men left. Kadarius Campbell standing next to Skelton, or to Whitaker, rather. There's a little bit of chatting back and forth. I'm not really sure what's going on now. Yeah, AJ doesn't look very happy about what's happening here. Oh, it looks like there's uh, an equipment issue, maybe. They're pushing him back. We're on the bank UNS from previous 15 yard penalty, that's right. first down. That's right, that's right. They forgot to put the, the penalty against the Spartans yeah. on that extra point. Backs us back up, so. Well, it, that, that changes things now. I mean, just take a knee now. We got with 36 seconds left in the game, Colorado Spartans 35, Cedar Rapids River Kings 26, play clock down to 20 seconds. Spartans look to close out this first regular season Home victory. Just a few seconds left to tick off the clock before this happens. Like once again, three men left. Whitaker sends him in motion. He hands the ball off Bully. to Campbell. Oh, uh, man, laundry, laundry, laundry. They need to go to a laundry mat with all this. Yes, looks like maybe there's a hold on the play, possibly by the Spartans. We'll wait to get the official ruling, but I mean, they handed it off to Campbell like we thought, unfortunately. Mm. The defense was coming across already early, and we kind of had to do a little grabby to keep them away. We'll wait for the official ruling, though, as the referee's still talking about it. I got quarters that they needed to do their laundry, man. This is ridiculous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, there's definitely been a lot, a lot of yellow out on the field today. I mean, we've had like seven penalties in the last 10 seconds. 
Yeah, and you're gonna, I imagine early on in the season, guys still working things out, still mm -hmm. figuring stuff out. That might be commonplace. We're going to shore up those little mistakes. Once the guys get more comfortable with each other, you know, get a little bit more accustomed to everything. On the offense, number 73, 10-yard penalty, first down. Also, the clock will not start until the snap because they did not make positive yardage on the play. So that is a hold on the offense. That's going to back us up 10 more yards. So we just keep backing up. That's just going to make this touchdown pass even further. All right, go for it. Who cares? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Launch it. Drop kick. Yep. Coach Shaw isn't happy. Obviously, you can see him pleading his case. Second down. So it looks like the penalty was declined, actually, by the River Kings. So they're going to take the loss of downs instead of the penalty. So it's going to be second and ten as the Spartans have the ball. We got Newbold and Evans out right. Kadarius Campbell to the right. Whitaker's got the ball. Take off There's on him. Take off on take him, baby. <laughs> there you go. Smart. There it is. Smart play. He slides down after a modest gain. We get a of timeout by is. Cedar Rapids, River Kings. So real quick, one more time, thanking our title sponsors for helping us bring you this broadcast. Top-notch heating. Time out. Top-notch plumbing, heating, and air on call 24-7, serving Larimer and Weld County's topnotchplumbing.com. Milton's Family Convenience Stores in Greeley, Eaton, and Kersey. On the go breakfast and lunch, Milton's Faith, Family, and Fuel. The Rock Garden at Highway 1 and 287 in North Fort Collins, home to Colorado Stonehenge and rock-solid inspiration. Fit RX is a non-gym gym located in the Hobby Lobby Shopping Center, Fort Collins. No matter your age, their goal is to help you move better. Fit-RX.com. And once again, as your Colorado Spartans On the coaching staff, have a lead. Oh, here we that go. That's their second UNS. The coach is disqualified from the game. He's got his panties in a bunch. I tell you what, this ref right here, I bet he asked him if he just wanted some milk and cookies. So that was a second unsportsmanlike conduct penalty on Coach Brooks is what was happening there? Because this is the second one on the team. This is the first one on Shaw, though. Yeah, that's what I thought. Okay, that's what I was thinking. They were so, on either coach before. Right. So you and can't. That's what and that's, I believe, what they're discussing is that that was not on Coach Shaw the first time. Still trying to figure it out. A lot of figuring. Yeah, a lot of figuring. As out, we yes. have 23 seconds left, River Kings down by nine. I don't think anything else is going to change this game, but we're still trying to figure some stuff out. And there goes, and then it's Coach Shaw. They do have him coming off the field. Interesting. So I'm not really sure about that, how that worked out. Unfortunately, so, coach is going to head off, head to the locker room. They must just accumulate then. It doesn't matter if it was just one coach. So the Spartans have the ball. He sends two men in motion. Whitaker hands it off to Campbell. Come on, he bully. runs. He breaks the tackle. Good. He falls forward for about a three, four-yard gain before taking down. Clock and the clock continues to run. Coach Shaw is not let. We're good there. Yeah, the game's over. What Seven does he need seconds to go? left. He's like, why am I leaving? He's kicking the thing out on yeah. the field. And as the clock winds down, that is in the books. Bingo. A victory. First regular season home victory for your Colorado Spartans as they win the game. Spartans 35, Cedar Rapids River Kings 26. We're going to take a break. We'll be back from action live here at Blue Arena. Your home for the Colorado Spartans on Pirate Radio 93.5 FM.
Do you are we good just doing five minutes and then being done, or do you need to come back and do more commercial breaks? Okay, we'll okay we'll just do a couple of minutes and then go to you. And welcome back to beautiful Blue Arena in Loveland, Colorado. High above the field one more time in the Ron's Bonds press box. As your home team, Colorado Spartans have defeated the visiting Cedar Rapid River Kings by a score of 35 to 26. Here getting their first home regular season game of the season. And Silky, it played out like Coach said. He said, different team, different opponent, same result. Same result, and that's exactly what happened. It was the exact same outcome. Maybe not 70 points, but it's still a W. Right? It wasn't the prettiest W, but we got there, right? Small mistakes almost led to big consequences for us, but we held our own. We stayed composed there at the end. Our defense stepped up like they should have, and here we are. We're 1-0 of the season now. So it's only moving forward from here. Now we are done talking and thinking about this opponent. We're moving on now. We can, yeah, absolutely. He is correct. We can turn the page. The uh, Spartans go on the road for the next few weeks. We'll get you in touch with their next coming opponent here shortly. But uh, can't say enough, honestly, about the resilience of our team here in the second half. You know, it was a back and forth game in the first half. Little adversity as far as the penalties, like you said, the little things here and there. We come back in the second half, and what happens? We jump all over him right off the bat with the beat. Big, deep bomb downfield to Dewash for the touchdown. Beautiful pass, beautiful catch. Shows the separation. Spartans took the lead, and for lack of a better term, didn't look back. Oh, they never looked back. I mean, there's a, the penalties kept adding up and adding up, and it turned into be a long 45 seconds, I'll be honest with you. But <laughs> we stayed strong. I mean, the penalty on Coach Shaw there at the end, not really too sure what that was about. But, uh, hey, he's a fighter. That's right. That's exactly right. And the team's going to show that. Coach Brooks, Coach Shaw, both fighters. You know, they're gonna, they put their guys in the position to make the plays. We've talked about that several times. Mm -hmm. And the skilled, talented players that we have on this Colorado Spartans team, man, they are fun to watch. They got moves. They're fast. You need to get out here and check these boys out because they are something. Oh, absolutely. Uh, some of them guys can't really dance too well, so some of those moves are in question. Uh, but that's why we're here. I'll teach them how to dance, how to move. That's okay. Um, but, hey, want to know, we got to keep pushing. Everything is looking forward from here. You know, Jeff Luke with the – with a nice little try there, man. What it? Come <laughs> on, man. He looked like a happy kid eating some cake right there, <laughs> man. It was, it was definitely, definitely a beautiful way to end. And a lot of back and forth. So um, we are going to take one more quick break before we uh, say goodbye to you guys. So you're listening to Colorado Spartan Football here on their exclusive home on Pirate Radio 93.5. We'll be right back. You said five minutes. Sounds good. Thank you very much.